Welcome back everyone to Charlotte, North Carolina for the Subway ACC Championship game. Wake winning the toss, deferring to the second half. Pitt will receive the opening kickoff. Vincent Davis and Rodney Hammond Jr. back deep for the Panthers. And it'll come out first down and 10 from the 25-yard line. This is the Subway ACC Championship as part of Dr. Pepper Championship Week. What a great Saturday under the lights here in Charlotte at Bank of America Stadium. We get a look at Kenny Pickett to start this football game off. The 6'3 senior, the ACC Player of the Year, as well as the ACC Offensive Player of the Year. Stellar numbers on the season, just 40 touchdown passes against only seven interceptions. First and 10, they're gonna hand it off. This is Davis out to the 30 yard line. Let's take a look at Robert's keys to the game, Robert. Yeah, we got no pressure, no diamonds, right? Both teams are trying to get fitted for a ring, but if they don't get pressure on the quarterback, they're not going to get that today. We talk about where's Waldo. They got to find Jordan Addison on the field before every single play because that's where the ball's normally going to go as they get a pass here to our game, Shockey Jock Louis. And then the last key is one-on-none. -on -one. Wake Forest wide receivers. They're going to have one-on-one -on -one matchups for about 70% of the game today. If they don't win those matchups, it's going to be a long day for them. But on offense, we call that one-on-none -on -one because no one should be able to guard you in a one-on-one -on -one matchup. I love it. Seven-yard gain for Jacques Louis. Third, pardon me, first and ten. Pick it. Incomplete. Good pressure up front by Miles Fox. The seventh year senior, that's right. That is a super duper senior, number 11. <laughs> a super duper senior, right? <laughs> but you see that right there from Miles Fox is exactly what they have to do with this offense. They have to get Kenny Pickett off his spot, make him uncomfortable. Don't let him sit back there and pick you apart like he has everybody else this year. So he's gotten a lot better progressing reading defenses, seeing triangles. Three men defensively moving at a time, deciphering at that time correctly. And again to Jacques Louis again out of Fort Myers, Florida. Picks up five, working against Zion Keith. It'll be third down coming up. And Pitt going quick. Both of these offenses are going to run plays at an extremely fast pace, but you see Kenny Pickett taking what the defense is giving him, giving him, and you love to see that from the quarterback. That was Mark Whipple on the sidelines, the offensive coordinator for the Panthers. Pickett, a very good runner. Don't sleep on those legs. Oh, he faked the slide. Sauce time. Pickett. Did that work? Touchdown, Pitt. Oh, my goodness. Did you see that? Oh, I can't wait to show you that replay. Kenny Pickett. We talked about it earlier in the broadcast. His legs are very underappreciated. But right here, he gets out. He gets out in a hurry. And then what's he do? He hits him with the fake oh. slide and goes and hits him with the cha-cha. Makes these guys understand that he can not only throw it, but he can run that bad boy too. What an electric beginning for the Panthers. Scoring on their opening drive. A career-long 58-yard run for Pickett. His fifth rushing touchdown of the season, the 20th of his career. He can hurt those defenses in so many different ways, as you just saw a moment ago. Robert, you knew about this. You talked to him about this. I don't want people to sleep on your on your legs either, man. You can run. Yeah, I know, man. People think I'm slow. I don't know. They think you're, they think you're I, slow. I don't know, <laughs> listen, yeah, I don't know where it came you, from. You put it out there, getting outside the pocket, making throws, man. Listen. Yeah. I, I know you got it. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, he, he was big cheesing when you brought up running, right? Listen, he, everybody sees him throwing for 4,000 yards and the 40 touchdown passes, but this guy can run. And I don't think I've ever seen someone attempt a fake slide and realize in the middle of it, hey, I think I can score right yeah. here. Hey, listen, we got Dan Marino on the sidelines, a Pitt graduate. He has the fake spike. Now we have a fake slide. Let's take one more look at Pickett hitting him with the sauce right here. He's like, oh, I'm going to slide. Nope, gotcha. <laughs> oh. oh, my Lord. Nick Anderson's like, I don't know if I've ever seen that before. But you said it, Mark Jones. Kenny Pickett just invented the fake slide. Mm. Mark Whipple said, uh, you've been holding out on me, son. <laughs> Offensive coordinator. Let's see what Sam Hartman does offensively 
for Wake Forest. First and 10 from their 25. Christian Beal Smith, who's been nicked up the last couple of weeks, starting at tailback. Hartman gates it out quickly to the edge. That's Roberson. Ja'Cory Robertson, one of those two tall, lanky receivers, Robert, that you alluded to a moment ago in winning their one-on-one -on -one battles, picks up five. Yes, when you get these guys the, the ball in space, that's what they do best. But they're both 1,000-yard receivers, and it's going to be a tough matchup for Damari Mathis and Marquez Williams all day today. Hartman, quick out, Pratter, picks up the first down. This one goes to Taylor Moore, and that's going to be a roughing penalty against Williams. Marquez Williams just slammed more into the turf. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 14, defense, 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. This was a suplex. Oh, yeah, he looked like he wanted to be in the WWE. Look at him. All week, people have been talking about Marquez Williams and how small he is. He said, uh-uh, I'm going to show you I play big boy ball. But guess what? We're not shooting any WWE promos no. right now. He's got to understand he's on a football field. Yeah, the ball now in the at the 48-yard line. Beal Smith in the backfield. There's that pronounced mesh point handoff that we'll see quite frequently from Wake Forest. As Beal Smith takes it down to the 46-yard line, Robert, tell me about that style of offense they run with the mesh point. Yeah, the long mesh is really designed to draw the linebackers up and open up holes for the RPO game behind them, and you'll see that all day today. There it is again. Hartman pulls it out, takes a shot downfield, the post, and incomplete at the 10 for A.T. Perry. Had a good look and a good shot at it. Just missed firing, so it'll be third and eight. Yeah, you'll see it right here. This long mesh between the quarterback and the running back. They're just waiting to see what the defense is going to do, and Hartman just missed that ball down the field. A.T. Perry, or our guy, Quint calls him push-off Perry. Hartman going to take off. Hey, if Pickett can run, so can I, is what he seems to say, and he picks up the first down. Hartman with 34 touchdown passes on the season against Ten interceptions, picks up nine. It's first down and ten from the 37. Wake Forest also will play tempo offensively. Neil Smith bouncing it out to the right. Picks up about two on the play. Brought down by Dennis. Now both of these offenses will run tempo. They just do it a little bit differently. Pitt sometimes huddles Wake is to the line as fast as they can. And you're going to see a lot of anything you can do, I can do better between these two quarterbacks today. Hartman. Gets it out, completes it to the 24-yard line. That was Roberson, Jaquari Roberson, second team all ACC this past season. Has a great understanding, according to his coaches, of the offense. And that's Kalijah Kansi. Shaken up. He's one of their best pass rushers up front, Robert. They can ill afford to have him on the sidelines for any prolonged amount of time. We're going to take a short break and come right back. It's V Week on ESPN as we continue Jim Balvano's fight against cancer. As you see right here, when the Pitt Panthers were coming into the stadium, Coach Narduzzi, he wasn't giving them handshakes. He was dapping them up. That's how loose he is right now. And I know he's feeling good after that picket run. I'll tell you, that pocket square game of Coach Narduzzi is fire, too. Out of the backfield, the reception good. Down inside the 20 to the 17. Christian Beal Smith, Robert, early returns showing us that he's moving pretty well here yeah. early in the game. He has. As you stated earlier, he missed a couple couple games uh, in a stretch here for the past couple weeks, so it's good to have him back. Second and four. Gets it again. Made a couple guys miss. Makes it down to the 12-yard line. And Wake Forest going tempo. They have been pretty efficient in the red zone this year. Six-yard gain that time. Oh, 91%. Wow. Tenth in FBS. Hartman keeps it flagged down. Hartman down just outside the 10-yard line. Kansi was taken off the field a moment ago. Their best pass rusher up front for Pitt. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. After this to the goal. Automatic first down. That's going to make it first and goal. Yeah, from Wake Forest. I was going to say, you know, they tried the long mesh there, but it was meshed up. <laughs> Pitt's defense comes in and pulls on the face mask, gives them the new set of downs. 
See what you did there. <laughs> From the five yard line. Justice Ellison in the backfield. Number 14, the freshman from Ashton, Virginia. Alongside Whitehart, the tight end. Warren in motion. A little bootleg action. And Harmon touchdown! Wide open. A.T. Perry with the catch. We showed you guys the video breakdown before the game started of Sam Hartman using his legs to extend plays and keep his eyes down the field. Right there to do a nice job on the fake. And A.T. Perry, beautiful job, blocking for a second and then sneaking to the back of the end zone. Sam Hartman says, Kenny Pickett, anything you can do, I can do better, whether it's with the arms or the legs. These guys are putting on a show right now. And 10.48 to go in the first quarter. It's going to be Chuck and Duck and sleep in the streets tonight. These two teams are two of the top scoring teams in college football. Perry with the catch. A.T. Perry. The A.T. stands for absolute terror for defensive backs. Oh, yeah. And you're not going to find one easier than this wide open tiptoe, buddy. We'll see when you get back. The Subway ACC Championship Game on ABC is brought to you by Subway. The eat fresh, refresh at Subway. And in part by Goodyear. Discover the possibilities. Goodyear, more driven. Those are the respective offensive coaching staffs applauding the touchdowns by the respective quarterbacks. But what I want to see is what the defensive coaches are doing. <laughs> exactly. They're they taking some Tylenol right they now. They're not happy right now, but I'm pretty sure one of those coaches in the pit booth said, did he just do a fake slide? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, this is so much fun. They're going to take the touchback. Rodney Hammond got a couple of record-second quarterbacks in this football game. The first team All-ACC quarterback and the second team all ACC quarterback. Look at those numbers from Pickett and Hartman. Yeah, and these guys have been in the ACC for a very long time. As you see, the school records that they've set are tied. Dan Marino's a great guy to be tied with a record yes. with, right? So understand that people have been seeing these two for a really long time. And uh, for them to have an opportunity to be the first team not named Clemson in the last six years what to be an that? ACC champion is phenomenal for both of these programs. Second possession of the football game for Pickett in offense. Surveys, fires, behind his intended receiver, incomplete. He tried to find Jared Wayne, who was working against the freshman Gavin Holmes. It'll be second and ten. Quint, what's good down on the pit side? Line? Well, I tell you, both of these schools brought a big contingent of fan. Wake sold over 20,000 tickets. These folks from Pennsylvania, though, they're here. They account for about 15 different sections. The intensity on the field is one thing. I tell you, these coaches are on the sideline, the cornermen, so to speak, as Kroll catches it over the middle for a nice gain of 14. The cornermen for both teams, kind of passive. They're not panicking because they know this is a 15-round fight. It's going to go late into the night. There's going to be haymakers all night. Now's not the time to lose it with all this offensive success. Yeah, great analogy, Q. And that's the way it's setting up right now. Tied at seven, just underway here in the first quarter. Pickett picks up the first down with that pass to Lucas Crow. Out to the 43, first and 10. Pickett fires wide open over the middle again. This is Jared Wayne. Got a blocker in front of him, cuts back, and down to the 22 yard line. Jasir Taylor finally made the tackle, but another huge chunk of real estate for the Panthers. Yes, anyone with a set of eyes can look down and see that Jordan Addison is one of the better receivers in the country, if not the best. But listen, Kenny Pickett, he went to Jared, and his name was Jared <laughs> Wayne for a big gain right there. These other players on this offense really benefit from Jordan Addison opening things for them. Hammond motions out of the backfield, wide open. Room service, ring it up. Touchdown, Panthers. And with that touchdown pass, Kenny Pickett just broke Dan Marino's record. Wow, look at that. He just passed Dan Marino. Did we just say that out loud? 
That's incredible, man. I know Kenny Pickett in this offense and his coach Mark Whipple are very proud of that accomplishment. And it was a simple, very simple play where they used two in cuts to pick the linebacker that was guarding the running back for the touchdown. Did you say picked? Not nah, what? Shut your mouth. What? I mean, <laughs> got in the way of. 14 to 7. Anytime you're on the same graphic with the great Dan Marino, you're in stellar company. One of the real luminaries of not just college football, but a Hall of Famer, the NFL Hall of Fame. And this was the pass that did it for Kenny Pickett. Sometimes as a quarterback, you just have to make the simple play, and Dan Marino <laughs> likes it just like the rest of us. Back at Bank of America Stadium, where Pittsburgh leads 14 to 7 in the Subway ACC Championship game. And Wake Forest will take it first and 10 from their own 25 yard line. Now, time for today's AFLAC trivia question. AFLAC. Who was the first commissioner of the ACC, and who did he attempt to recruit to play golf while he was at Wake Forest as the AD? Hey, it's an interesting question. They, they put us amongst administration now. They, they're trying to throw us off the scent so hard that they're talking about ADs now. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Hartman fires complete. Nice little screen. That was Roberson. Roberson is a guy that timeout injured pit player. Extremely skilled. We got another Pittsburgh player. Shaken up at about the 36 yard line. They've already had Cansey shaken up. Well, tomorrow we'll have the exclusive reveal, folks, of the college football playoff matchups in the Cotton Bowl and the Orange Bowl to be played on New Year's Eve on ESPN. Reese and the crew will also unveil the New Year's six bowl games and have the final top 25 rankings in this four hour special. It all starts at noon Eastern. 9 a.m. Pacific after on ESPN in the ESPN app. One app, one tap. That's A.J. Woods that was shaken up a moment ago. And here's a look at the college football playoff top six. The rankings as of November 30th, presented by AT&T 5G. Oh, boy. Georgia got knocked today. They did get knocked. Upset. Alabama knocked them off. Really just threw That was pretty convincing, too. It was, it was very convincing. Christian Beal Smith. Hey, and congratulations to Jackson State winning the SWAC Conference Championship title. Coach Prime, Deion Sanders, they'll be going against South Carolina State in the Celebration Bowl two Saturdays from tonight in Atlanta. Hey, who said you can't hire a coach who's a former player that doesn't have much experience? Hey, he did pretty, pretty well. Beal Smith, Baldonado making the tackle. You know, he's kind of, Deion's kind of started as a novelty, like, oh, no, they brought in Deion Sanders. But listen, he's flying high right now, getting his guys to the celebration bowl. And that game will be on ABC in a couple of weeks. Doesn't it just and look South like Carolina they, State. He did a great job. Yeah, I was gonna say, doesn't it just look like they have so much fun yeah. playing for prime time or coach prime, as he likes to be called? I don't know why you wouldn't want to play for a coach that can get you to the league. Nobody knows more about it and playing it at a high level than he does. That's Servassier Dennis. And how about Marcus Freeman? Notre Dame, defensive coordinator, gets the head coaching job there. You just saw the reaction of the guys. It was well-deserved. They got their guy, yeah. and those guys believe in him. We saw the reaction of the Notre Dame players when it was announced, and we talked about him last week on our show, about him being one of the top candidates. Cansey is back in the ball game. Number eight up front for the Panthers. Hartman taking a shot up top. Little contact and a flag thrown as A.T. Perry was working against Damari Mathis. Uh, you know, sometimes if you can't cover him, you just got to try to trip him up. And that's exactly what Damari Mathis did there. Sometimes down the field there's accidental contact, and they won't throw it on that one. But if you'll see here, he was holding pretty good. Defense, 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> like, just Perry. look at him there. He said he got away from him a little bit. Hey, come back, come back. Yeah. No, no, no. Don't leave me yet. Hey, one thing we have to bring to light here is the size differential. You alluded to it a little bit earlier, Robert. A.T. Perry is 6'5". Roberson on the other side is about 6'2". They've got a decided advantage height-wise against those DBs. That's an incomplete pass intended for the aforementioned Roberson. I was talking about Roberson a little bit earlier. Went over 1,000 yards receiving just like Perry on the other side. And uh, coaches say that he really understands defenses. And uh, the offensive coordinator, Coach Ruggiero, gives him a lot of latitude to make certain reads within the offense. It's a little bit high for Perry, and if you overthrow a 6'5 guy, you're really missing, right, Robert? Yes, you are really missing. As I like to say, Yao Ming wasn't catching that one. It was way <laughs> too high. But when you talk about Roberson, some guys just have it. They have a knack for reading coverage. They have a knack for getting to the spot that they need to be when the quarterback needs them to be there. So look for them to look for not only Roberson and Perry, but number 83, Taylor Moore, and also in these third and long situations. And fires a strike fighting lunging looks like he got the first down Perry hey you want to talk wow. about size right size matters especially in that situation did you see him reach out the long arm right there he catches it breaks one tackles plays strong and then he uses his go-go gadget wow. arm to go get in that first down An unrelenting unyielding effort and they're going to take another look at this to see if maybe the knee came down The ruling on the field was a first down for Perry. It's coach Dave Clauston, head coach. Let's bring in Matt Austin right now to take another look at this. Matt, tell us what you think about this play and your interpretation of it. Well, this is a better view. Let's see when is that, what hits the ground first. It looked from that view like his hip might have hit the ground first and it depends on where the ball is when that body part is down so I don't know if we can go to a split screen and show from the the, the upper view to show the first down line but he's not going to get full benefit of the stretch because the ball is down right there mm. well, great effort nonetheless by A.T. Perry thanks a lot Matt play under review what do you make of the way that Wake Force has moved the football so far as we take one more look at a kind of a side angle here. Yeah, Wake Force is just doing what they do, but right there, I that looks like a first down to the me. The ball regardless. was still out, yeah. Yeah, he didn't get the full, the full extension, right? The he full didn't need stretch, the full extension. But he didn't need it. It looks like his either his hip or his elbow went down before the full stretch, but even then, it still looks like it was close enough to be a first down. Right. The ruling on the field. Okay, so the Demon Deacons move the chains. It'll be first down and 10. And right there when the elbow goes down is exactly where the ball is dead. But from the review, it still looked like he had enough to get the first down. From the 35. And Wake Forest, as we talked about, is doing what they do with the RPOs. And they're not just becoming one-dimensional and throwing every snap. Hartman given time down the sideline, one-on-one. -on -one. Incomplete in and out of the arms. Mathis knocked it away from Perry. They went right back to Perry offensively. And that's a good matchup for Wake Forest. Unable to make the catch here, though. Yeah, you see right here, A.T. Perry, 6'5", trying to fend off the guy, but he just did a little too much. He's got to make that catch. Mm. If it hits your hands, you got to make sure it's a touchdown. Second and 10. Hartman going to take off himself. He'll get the first down, pushed out of bounds, just inside the 25. And they move the sticks again. Picks up 11 on the play. Hartman represented Wake Forest at the prestigious Manning Passing Academy this past summer, where he actually spent a little time with Kenny Pickett, his counterpart tonight. Gets it out quickly, compete to Roberson, and he's brought down. Good tackle in the open field by Devonshire. MJ Devonshire. 
It's those tackles in space as a defense. When you have these high-flying offenses, you have to make those plays because they want their speed in space. And right there, Devonshire made sure he wasn't going anywhere. What a dime by Hartman. First down at the 12-yard line to Perry working against Mathis. They're just going to work on him. And hitting his favorite target. One of two wideouts with over 1,000 yards this year. He picks up 15. And yet another play where Sam Hartman gets out the pocket, uses his athletic ability to make a play. Looking into the end zone, fires. Incomplete behind his intended receiver. That was Donald Stewart. Working against Devonshire, it'll be second down and 10 for Wake Forest. Pitt has to find a way to get penetration against this long mesh. It's given Sam Hartman too much time to process and go through his reads. They're going to have to start knifing to get in the backfield so that they don't feel comfortable doing it. He's going to do it himself. Hartman still on his feet. Hartman, touchdown, Demon Deacons. Got a great block up front from Devontae Gordon. Nice little escort into the end zone for his 11th rushing touchdown of the season. 11 rushing touchdowns for the Sam Hartman. If you like offensive football and points, this is the game for you. Make sure you watch this entire bad boy. That run wasn't quite as good as the fake slide, <laughs> but I can just imagine Sam Hartman in his head saying, anything you can do, I can do better. I can do anything better than you. Hey, give him a little time. Give him a little time. Extra point away from nodding this game at 14. These teams average right around 43 points a game of offense. Sam Hartman with a good block from Gordon, number 62 initially. And then downfield, man, he just knocked those white jerseys into the end zone to cap a 12-play, 75-yard drive. Using up about three minutes on the clock. And the first, well, eight and a half minutes of this football game, we've already got 28 points. 266 yards of total offense. Are you comfortable? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to get this chair here and really settle in because this could be one of those four-hour, 15-minute football games with the football flying through the air and a lot of points on the board as we expected coming in. Tied at 14 with 6.31 to go in the first quarter. It's kind of a wild stat, but... Wake has 12 first downs on 23 plays. There is no defense right now, guys. The defense is non-existent. Yeah, I want to get that shot up in the booth of the defensive coordinators and uh, see what they're doing. Just the second meeting all time between these two schools. Pitt won the only previous meeting. Well, aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Anything can happen as long as you have the drive. Goodyear, more driven. Well, you talk about the points. We alluded to it a moment ago. Just tough to keep these two respective teams out of the end zone this year. Just points, points, more points. Wake Forest scored a lot of points in some of their close wins this year as well. Tied at 14. Down the sideline, caught by Addison for the first down. He was working against Smenda. Oh, pick it. Came up a little bit slow there. Pickup of 19 on that pass. We said early in the broadcast that you got to get to the quarterback, get pressure on him, hit him, make him feel you as a defense. And it looks like Pickett might be limping a little bit after one of those hits. Vincent Davis in the backfield. Pickett walking over to the sideline and the officials running in now to play clock still running. It's down to two. They just get it off in time. And this is Davis. Vincent Davis with a nice sprint over the right side. Luke Masterton making the tackle. Here's a look at the last play where Pickett was shaken up and got up slowly. 
Yeah, you see the hit there. And sometimes as a quarterback, it's not the hits that everyone thinks hurt right. that hurt the most. It's the ones that look the most subtle. And I wonder what's going on with Pickett mm. right there, but he's got to fight through it. Picked up 10 on that last completion. Over the middle, man, into a tight window for Jaden Bradley. Robert, he looks okay, although he seems to be wincing a little bit there as you look through the face mask and into the helmet a little bit. Yeah, he's wincing a little bit right there, but he said, hey, my guy, I'm good. I can still make these throws across the middle of the field. He just pinpoint accurate that one down the middle between coverage. This guy's incredible. Got 15 that time. Jordan Addison on the Bolitnikoff watch list, a finalist. Move to the slot. Pickett goes the other way on the comeback. Incomplete intended for Bradley. Let's take a look at how Pickett got up after that last play. Yeah, well, and this time it wasn't even a hit. It's just there's something wrong with his back, mm. it, it appears. And then right here he throws the pass, gets oh. kind of nudged just a little bit. They're going to have to check on him and make sure that he's okay for the rest of the day. But I tell you what, he just threw that pass before the receiver was even close to coming out of his break. The anticipation of Penny Pickett is on full display. That guy's got to catch the ball for him. Crawl in motion. Pickett tried to run the screen for Davis. It's incomplete. Remember earlier this week he was slowed down by a little bug that was going around a little bit. But when we spoke with him a little bit earlier, he says he's feeling fit and fine and ready to go here tonight. Third and ten. Bank of America Stadium. The microphone is yours. Lots of linen on the field as Pickett scrambles out of bounds. Right near the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. Let's see what these flags are about. All the way back at the 39. It's going to go against the Panthers. Called a chop block. Personal foul, legal block below the waist, number 22 offense, penalties declined, fourth down. That's going to go against Davis, the tailback. They called 22 Vincent Davis for the illegal block below the waist. Sometimes they tell these backs, man, you just got to... <laughs> You got to stick your face in them. Obviously, do it the right way by the rules. Right. But right there, coming inside out, they got him for that penalty. So Sam Scarton is going to attempt a field goal from 49 yards out. His career long is 47. So this would be a career best for him. 16 to 19 on the year. Low line drive. He's going to miss it to the left. So Wake Forest gets the first stop quote unquote of this football game with 416 to go in the first quarter that stop alone could, could be enough to win the game <laughs> so it'll be first and 10 from the 31 for Wake Forest well Coming up this week on Sunday NFL Countdown, before the Ravens and Steelers renew their rivalry, Lamar Jackson goes one-on-one -on -one with Steve Young. Plus, Randy Moss sits down with Bucks Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. Kickoff for Sunday with Countdown at a special time, 9 a.m. Eastern on ESPN, before the college football playoff is revealed. That's Christian Turner in the backfield getting a couple of yards. One yard on the play. Second and nine for Hartman. As a starter, as an 18-year-old freshman, hits it to Williams on the outside, and Williams picks up the first down. As you see these offenses continue to rack up plays, you're going to see guys rotating in left and right because it's a war of attrition today. You're going to see third and fourth receivers getting catches, third and fourth corners getting plays on defense. They come with a little pressure, Pittsburgh does. Hartman releases it. And incomplete. And a flag thrown as Morin was being covered 
by Hallett. I'm not sure that Morin had an opportunity to catch that because he himself was twisted up. He broke to his right. The pass came left. Yeah, Morin was was a little off balance there. He wasn't quite sure where the ball was going, but he did get his eyes around. And I just think for Eric Hallett, that's just a, a situation where you're wrong place, wrong time. Because he's actually trying to make oh, a play it. on the ball. Yeah. He just got there a little early. So you hear the boos, but at the end of the day, that is still pass interference. Pittsburgh with four penalties for 50 yards right now. Hartman hands it off to Turner. Christian Turner! Breaks a tackle and sprints for another first down at the 23. Turner averaging about four yards a carry on the season. Got 16 there. Warren Ruggiero right now is in his bag calling plays. As soon as Pitt brings blitz, he's running downhill runs. Hartman up top. Touchdown, Morin! Moore! In traffic, Taylor Morin went up and snagged it for his fifth touchdown of the season. Taylor Morin said, I'm going to make up for that last play where I got hit a little early. And he goes out and mosses MJ Devonshire in the middle of the end zone. Wow. Offensive football is on full display. 34, now 35 points on the board total with a little of over three minutes to go in the first quarter of the Subway ACC Championship. Robert. Yeah, you're going to see it right here. He's got a one-on-one -on -one matchup down here at the bottom of the screen. Sam Harmon's going to take the snap, do the nice little long mess that they do, and he knows, listen, I trust my guy. My third receiver is better than your third corner. So he says, look, Taylor Moore, you just run down the field, and when I throw it up, I know you're going to make the play for me. He puts a perfect ball placement on the outside shoulder, giving Moore an opportunity to go up and make the play. That's called trust. And it doesn't matter that Taylor Morin is only 5'10", probably about 5'9 or 5'8", like our guy right. Q down there. But listen, they give him a couple inches on the, on hey, the media guy. He plays bigger. And he played big right there. So does Q. 21-14 with 3.07 to go. And one of the questions that begs now is, what of the health of Kenny Pickett, who we saw look uncomfortable, seemed to be in a little bit of pain during that last drive. He just came out of the tent a moment ago. You know, offensive coordinator Mark Whipple said, it's not about them, it's about us. And Kenny Pickett is in a big part of what they do on all sides of the ball because he gives everybody confidence when they step on the field. And you, you just hope he's able to still go. It'll be first and 10 for Pitt from the 25. Let's go back to Kevin in the studio. Or not. Okay, okay. Ooh, that show tomorrow is going to be hot when we find out the final four. Let's check in with Quint. Kenny Pickett back on the field after spending that entire possession in the medical tent. As Pitt runs a sweep here, it's Hammond. Pickett came back for this season, for this night, for this game, to win an ACC championship. He looks okay, and this will be key, his mobility, his ability to run the ball and take hits. As Mark Whipple, their offensive coordinator, told us this week that they expect to use Pickett a little more in the run game tonight. And they certainly did on that opening drive when he scored that touchdown. Fires a strike to his tight end, Bartholomew, who comes up a little bit short of the first down by a couple of yards. Brought down by Zion Keith. With about two and a half minutes to go in the first quarter, a seven-yard pickup. You know, last week, Kenny Pickett really used his tight ends, Bartholomew uh, uh, and other guys, a lot, throwing them the ball 11 times. So that's also a big part of their offense. High snap, and Pickett safely falls on it back at the 35. Kenny Pickett realizes how you must play this game of football. Here's what he had to say. 
There's only one way this game can be played. It's not for nice guys. It's a violent sport. You just have to have that edge. And he's had it all year. And he's had to, well, put up with a little bit of a hit right now, a little bit of discomfort. We don't know how much. Loss of eight on that previous play. Blitz coming, pick it. Got away from the first guy, but not the second. He sacked at the 23 by Luigi Villain and Luke Masterton. That's Wake's 33rd sack of the season. Luigi Villain, relentless pursuit of the quarterback. Whenever you have two high-level players like Kenny Pickett and Sam Hartman slinging the rock in the backfield, you have to get pressure on the quarterback, make them uncomfortable. Kenny Pickett made the first guy miss. But Luigi Villain said, uh-uh-uh, not this time, buddy. Villain from Ottawa. Ball start, number 22. Offense, five-yard penalty, still fourth down. Well, that's going to go against Davis. There's Whipple speaking with Pickett on that Pittsburgh sidelines. Clock running as we approach a minute to go in this high-scoring first quarter. You said Luigi Villain's from, from Ottawa? Ottawa, Canada. About, uh, somebody else is from Canada. Yeah, about four hours drive east of Toronto. Start off on the North Shore, Lake Ontario. Got some ballers up there. A little minute to go from the 41. Taylor Morin, who caught that touchdown pass a moment ago, feels that 42-yard punt. And Pickett is going to go back in that tent. And under a shroud of secrecy and cover, He'll be attended to by that athletic training staff with 41 seconds to go. First and 10 for Wake Forest at the 41. It's been fun to watch this Demon Deacon team. We saw them earlier this year, Robert, against Florida State to see them get off to a great start, winning their first eight games of the season. Ellison on the run. Going to pick up about three and a half. Baldonado making the tackle. And you know, Dave Clawson has talked all year about them taking the next step, right? I think 8-0 is taking said, the next step. I also think that them being here in this ACC championship game is taking the next step, but they're not just satisfied to be here or happy to be here. They're here to win. Second and seven, Hartman taking a shot on the post. Got a man! And off the mark for Morin just by an inch or two. He's going to work against Marquez Williams. It'll be third down and seven. Oh, it was so close right there for Sam Hartman. They run the long mesh. They occupy the safety with the out route by the inside receiver and run a post over the top. Taylor Morin wide open. Sam mm. Hartman, you have to hit that one right there. That was his shot. Four receivers, a little motion up front. This might be a free one, but they're going to blow it dead. Dave Clawson signed a contract extension recently. He's taken his team to five consecutive bowl games. Talking about Clawson, he's done a great job coaching this squad. They've won so many close games this year. When you look at various tipping points in their season, Virginia, that win gave them confidence. Um, you know, close losses, close games against... Louisville, Syracuse, North Carolina State. And the way that he's coached this year, obviously he's the ACC coach of the year. And he's a seventh weight coach to do that. But he said his team was defined by all those close wins because it gives them the confidence knowing that in crucial moments they can make plays. That was the first Wake Forest penalty of the game. And a dart thrown to A.T. Perry for the completion. Boy, Sam Hartman is... On his grind right now, on his game. You say he's on his game, I say he's in his bag. <laughs> right there, he knows he's going to get hit. He still makes the throw to A.T. Perry on the sideline. Once again, one-on-one -on -one with Damari Mathis. Look at those numbers for the respective quarterbacks. Both these quarterbacks in their bag, Robert Griffin, like the fries are at the bottom. We'll be back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Now we're going to take you back here to the touchdown from Kenny Pickett a couple possessions ago. 
They run the running back, they motion him across, and what Kenny Pickett's looking for here is who's covering the guy. But he's not the only one. The wide receiver is also trying to recognize that it's this linebacker who is blocking him, who he's going to be covering the running back, so he just gets in his way slightly, and that's why Rodney Hammond Jr. was wide open on that touchdown mm. that they had a couple possessions ago. But as you see the look here of Kenny Pickett on the sideline coming out of the tent a couple times, he's got to make sure that his back is okay because right. he's a quarterback. Throwing and, and, and twisting with your back can be a problem if you have anything harboring you. Second and 13. Hartman with time. Incomplete off the hands of his receiver, A.T. Perry. You don't see him drop it much. It was batted away by Mathis, who seemed to get a hand in there and knock it out. So it'll be third and long for the Demon Deacons. Well, this is exactly where Pitt wants them to be, and Damari Mathis did a nice job playing through the ball there to get it out. They send a blitz. Hartman fires. Picked off by Williams. And there is the game's first turnover. Marquez Williams with the interception for the Panthers. Sam Hartman trying to play with a little anticipation, getting the ball to Taylor Moore in it, and Marquez Williams just happened to be the right guy in the right place, and you see it right there. Got those, yep. yep, it looks like he got those elbows together to keep the ball from hitting the ground. He recognized the ball being thrown. Morin was not out of his break yet. Wow, we talked about the turnover margin. The team that wins it could possibly win this game. Dave Clawson talked to us and said when his team doesn't turn the ball over, they win mm -hmm. ball games. Anaconda in the backfield for Pittsburgh. Pick it. Incomplete for Addison. Let's revisit our Aflac trivia question for tonight's game. Aflac. Who was the first commissioner of the ACC, and who did he attempt to recruit to play golf while he was the AD at Wake Forest? The answer is, I struck out, Robert, I'll be honest. And it's not the first time. <laughs> and it won't be the last time. Anaconda running it down to the 40 yard line. Here's the answer. Big reveal here. Jim Weaver recruited Arnold, Arnold Palmer. Palmer. Oh, wow. Okay. Hey. I'll be looking over your shoulder on the test on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Cooperate and graduate, man. <laughs> Third down and six. Pickett steps up in the pocket. There's a flag down, pick it down, brought down by Luigi Villane. It looks like the flag is going to be for holding on the defense. Corner was in press coverage and really holding the receiver down the field. Defense, number 28, Jamie on penalty. Well, speaking of commissioners, Quint standing by with first-year ACC commissioner Jim Phillips. Jim, we were just remarking the turnout here, the, the, the weather and then the fans. How do you best describe this environment? It's been spectacular, Quint. I mean, these are two terrific football programs, 10 and 2, two top 20 teams. It's representative of the fans in the ACC. They love college football. Great turnout. This year for the ACC, you got four teams in the top 25. You have 10 bowl eligible teams. How would you characterize the season? Exciting and successful. When you look at the success of the ACC, you just mentioned it. We may not have started the year as, as strong as we wanted to, but I think that as the year went on, you saw how good a football we play in the ACC. Looking forward to finishing this championship game and crowning an AC champ and winning a lot of bowl games. Thank you, Jim. Thanks. It's a great year for quarterbacks in this conference and offenses, and we're seeing that tonight. Yeah, Q, we got two of the best in the country on the field here. Pickett delivers a strike to Addison. Couldn't get away from the tackler, the 29, Taylor. A different look in Charlotte for the championship game in the ACC. No Clemson, no Florida State. As these two teams sign the death certificate on Clemson's stranglehold on the conference. But there is a Clemson fan in the building. <laughs> Down to the 25-yard line, that's... Benacanda again. Yeah, and I'm more than sure there's a, some Clemson fans in the building without a doubt, but this is the first time, right, since 2008 that it hasn't been Florida State or Clemson to represent the Crazy. Atlantic Division wow. in the ACC championship game. 
and that's just mind-blowing. But it just shows you how much stronger this conference is getting with the amount of teams that are in the top 25 and these two teams right here. Wayne in motion. They're going to run it. Pickett hands it off. Great tackle behind the line of scrimmage by D.J. Taylor. Oh, the D.J. was spinning that time. Abenakanda got rocked. Oh. And they come up short of the first down. D.J. Taylor filled the gap in a hurry and brought the beats with him. Yeah. Oh, my Lord. That's the kind of physicality that you want to see from your defensive players playing linebacker. They got to step up at some point and say, you know what? Enough is enough. They're not just going to run down the field and make it easy. It's like going to the basketball hoop right. in, the, in the game. They say, hey, you got to make them earn it. <laughs> Wake Forest has to find a way to continue to make Pitt earn it and get them off the field. Pitt's 15 to 22 on fourth down this season. They go to throw, pick it downfield into traffic incomplete. He tried to find Addison. No flag, even though he's looking for one. Malik Mustafa was back there in coverage. I can tell you now, Mark Whipple and Pat Narduzzi decided to go for it on fourth and one right there because right. of their kicker, Sam Scarton, missing that kick earlier, and they didn't come up with what they wanted. Welcome back, everyone. Monday Night Football hits to Orchard Park. For just the second time since 2008, Mac Jones and the Patriots taking on Josh Allen and the Bills. 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN. ESPN Deportes and the ESPN app. Hartman brought down. Looked like there might have been a hand in the face mask, but there wasn't. Dayon Hayes making the tackle. That was the type of, type of penetration that Pitt needs to get to shut down this offense, but I'm not going to let those ugly sweaters that were just on the hey, screen hey. <laughs> go, go by the wayside. Listen, people, wear them. Those two were two of the ugliest I've ever seen. Ugly Christmas sweater season is in. Loss of three on that sack. Hartman brought down at the 30. There's a flag down at about the 24-yard line. And another thing people need to watch is that Sam Hartman can't be holding on to the ball so long in the pocket. Look, one hand on the ball, it's so loose. Holding. Number 79, offense. That was dangerous. Very yeah. dangerous. It's, it's a very dangerous thing. And we, we, we were talked about that early on in our careers. Two hands on the ball in the pocket. When you let it fly out like that, you never know what can happen. And he's already thrown an interception today. He's got to make sure that they get back on the right side of the turnover margin. They're the number one team in the conference in that area. They don't want to keep giving the ball uh, over to Pitt and keep them in this game or give them an opportunity to take it over. Hartman flushed out and throws it out of bounds. Beyond the line of scrimmage, outside the pocket. No grounding. Hayes and Morgan with the pressure. It's third. And Raleigh Durham to go. And, <laughs> and now Pitt brings Ooh. in their Delta package. Right? They take a backer off. They bring in their rush specialist, and they're going to come after the quarterback. They've been either first or second in sacks. But this time they face the run. Neil Smith. Yeah, Pitt's defense has been either first or second with Oklahoma State's defense in sacks in the latter part of the season. Yeah, they have. They're, they're second in all of the FBS in sacks per game, and they're top ten in the FBS in tackles for loss. So this defensive line is a shoot up the field, get into the backfield type okay. of defensive line. We talked to Desmond Alexander, and he even said, Hey, we're trying to have a team meeting back there. Right. We're making bets on who's going to get there first. All legal bets, guys. No, no legal <laughs> bets. Just chicken wings for your teammates, huh? Exactly. Jordan Anderson standing at his own 40-yard line, waiting for this punt from Kurt Christodoulou. The Australian punter. He gets off a great one all the way back to the 28. Addison got a block on the edge. Pitt has a good special teams punt return unit. He brings it all the way back to the 30-yard line. Pat Narduzzi knows that his special teams unit is explosive with Jordan Addison back there. Why would you kick the ball to this guy? Now they've got a spark and some momentum. When we get back, you'll see it. The Subway ACC Championship game on ABC is brought to you by Honey Nut Cheerios. Good goes round. 
1953, Henry Model T Ford. Boy, what a great nickname. Became Pitt's first black quarterback. And in 1956, the Panthers' Bob Greer made national headlines, becoming the first black student athlete to play in the Sugar Bowl against Georgia Tech. Look at those headlines. For more stories like this, log on to theundefeated.com. Always much respect, much love to the pioneers like that who had to fight through a lot of segregation back in that time. Davis on the run. Sometimes not being able to stay with their teammates in the same hotel, eat at the same restaurants. So much love and prayers to them. Yeah, the way I look at it is without no Model T, there is no me. So thankful to him for breaking that color barrier for guys like myself at that play. Wayne on the double pass to the tight end, Krull. We've seen that play before. Jared Wayne has thrown it a couple of times this year. And Mark Whipple, the offensive coordinator, picks up 19. A little trickery there, Rock. Mark Whipple let us know that he was going to bring all the tricks out the bag. And you see it right here. Hey, Jared Wayne, just back up a little bit and drop a dime to the tight end. They're doing it all. They want to win this game badly, so they're going to dig in that bag as deep as they can. Pick it into the end zone. Dropped. Incomplete. Knocked away by Gavin Holmes at the last moment. He went to, back to Jared Wayne. It'll be second and goal. Pitt trying to go in for the tie here. Yes, you can't go back to Jared that many times, right? So, <laughs> Gavin Holmes, when we talked to defensive coordinator Lyle Hemphill, he said Gavin Holmes is a player. He's got a cast on his arm, and he doesn't care. He's going to lock up whoever he guards on every single snap. Davis brought down at about the 10-yard line by Jasheen Davis of Wake Forest. Davis playing with a heavy heart. You see him on your screen right there. Lost his mother. A little bit earlier this year. Penalty goes against Wake Forest and Davis, a native of Georgia, playing with a heavy heart. Had to fight through some issues as a result of that, but back on the field and playing well. And of course, we heard you talk about Hartman and his mental health. How important that is for these players. Second and goal coming up. Addison motion into the bottom of your screen. Pickett fires his way. Coming in hot, incomplete. Woo. That one had some smoke on it, Robert Griffin. Yeah, I think I can still see the smoke right now. Kenny Pickett tried to destroy this guy's hands. Right here, he sees what he wants. He's got it, but he might have thrown that one a little too hard. Jordan Addison was open on the one-step slant. Just too hot for him to handle. This time he connects. Jared Wayne went back to Jared. And we're an extra point from being tied. Looks like Kenny Pickett decided to take a little bit off this time on that throw. <laughs> but they went at Gavin Holmes three times in a row, and the third time was the charm. Kenny Pickett finds his guy. Jared Wayne does a nice job stacking the corner, sticking his foot in the ground, and crossing face like you're supposed to on the skinny post. And Kenny Pickett punched that ticket for six. Big time. Pickett now with the most touchdown passes in a single season in the ACC. Continuing to rewrite the record book. And you see right here. With the Kung Fu Kid, right? Hey, Jared Wayne said, <laughs> let's go, baby. <laughs> the Charlotte, the Queen City, a glow at night. And I tell you what, these two teams providing a little bit more juice and energy. Great energy inside Bank of America Stadium. The Subway ACC Championship tied at 21. Mark Jones chopping it up with Robert Griffin the third. Quinn Kessnick down on the sidelines. Kenny Pickett passing Deshaun Watson on the ACC's all-time touchdown passing list, single season list. And the meter is still running, folks, so don't go anywhere. And that's the second quarter. And it's just been a special year for that young man and both of these teams offensively putting up points in bunches 
And offensive coordinator Mark Whipple just said, listen, don't make it bigger than it is. Go out and execute. Hartman hands it off. Nice run by Turner. Turner got about eight on the play, came into the game with 429 yards rushing. They've done it mostly by committee running the football this year at Wake Forest. Gets the call again, and Turner going to be stopped up a little bit short of the first down. Remember, neither of these teams were picked by the prognosticators to finish near the top. Wake Forest projected fifth in the Atlantic, Pittsburgh fourth in the Coastal, yet here they are. And keep in mind, Wake Forest is the smallest Power 5 school by enrollment in the entire country. And that's exactly why you play the games on the field, not on paper. This is where they get to point at each other. Flags down on the field. But the Demon Deacons really the small school that could. You know, I spoke with Chris Paul, graduate of Wake Forest University, about the success of this football team. And he looked at me and smiled and said, you know, Mark, Wake Forest is a football school. It's a football <laughs> school. <laughs> uh, but right there on that flag with Zach Tom, he just went a little too late. The defender was in the neutral zone. And if you go right there and point at him, they'll give you that as an offsides neutral zone infraction. But because the guy got back and then he decided to go and point the finger, the refs ain't playing that, man. Okay. From the 29. And Pitt going to call one of its three remaining timeouts with 7.02 to go in the first half. 42 points on the board. Back after this. It's a rant before from him. Hartman at quarterback. Both quarterbacks have thrown for a couple of touchdowns and rushed for another already in this football game with 7.02 to go in the first half. Little backside pressure. Hartman swallowed, swarmed, and sacked at the 19 by Servassier Dennis. Servassier Dennis, they bring in that Delta package and unleash the Wolves, or should I say Panthers, yep. on Sam Hartman and Wake Forest. He's sitting over the center, and what does he do? He stays patient. He runs a little twist game around, and as soon as Hartman tries to break the pocket and extend plays like we showed you on the plays earlier in the broadcast, he's right there to make the tackle. Yes. Beautiful game plan by Randy Bates, shutting down the Wake Forest offense right there. Third sack of the season for Servassier Dennis. Here's the punt from Ivan Mora. They kick it away wisely. Kick it away from Addison this time. Remember last time he had that 40 yard yard punt return. Well, aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, making the plays that move you forward. Goodyear, more driven. Boy, the Queen City really popping tonight. Oh, yes, it is. Well, thank you, the mayor. It was great walking downtown on. Martin Luther King Street and 3rd Street and mingling amongst the Pitt fans, the Wake Forest fans, getting their thoughts and their predictions and ideas and a fantastic atmosphere here in Charlotte this week. Did you go out uptown last night? Yes, I did. Okay. Cut, cut some of the Pitt pep rally. Okay. You know, I'm, I'm a friend of college football. Right? Listen, we die fully in, <laughs> full immersion. 613. Addison on the jet sweep. Tried to get north-south, picks up about five yards on the play as we approach six minutes to go here in the first half. Zion Keith making the tackle on the play. You know, Addison does a great job, not just on the football field, off the football field, too. He has a name, image, and likeness deal which provides tickets for underserved children, bringing them to different cultural and sporting events. Pickett out of the backfield hits his receiver, Abanakanda. Brought down by Masterton. But you love to see what the name, image, and likeness has done across the country. This young man in particular enriching his community in so many different ways because of it. It's funny how the world didn't come to an end when players started getting a little bit of cash in their it. pockets. And it's not just about making catches and catching touchdowns. It's about how you impact the world in a better way. And Jordan Addison is doing that a very, 
very high level. Third and eight, blitz coming. Pickett had it knocked away. It's on the ground, recovered by the Panthers. Luigi Villain knocked it out of his hands. Anderson was in the vicinity too. It'll be fourth down coming up for Pitt. Luigi Villain, man, he is getting after the quarterback. And Wake Forest said, guess what? You might have your Delta package, but we got a package of our own. And he just goes in and swipes the ball right out of Kenny Pickett's hands. Wow, Quint, what you got for us, brother? Wow, this long snapper, Cal Adamitis, as you guys were mentioning, Addison's NIL deal, Adamitis cutting his hair on December 10th. You see his locks, he's got the 70s rock style haircut. <laughs> he has raised over $112,000. He'll have his haircut next week on December 10th at Heinz Field. All that money going to the University of Pittsburgh Hospital Cancer Center for Children. I mean, what, 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 what a, what a, Exclamation point by Cal Adamitis. The, the NIL yeah. haircut, 112,000 for Children's Cancer Center. Such a wonderful act of philanthropy and giving himself. Also during V Week, when you talk about the tie-in given to kids who are being treated for cancer, Cal Adamitis, a job well done. Oh yeah, we tip our hat to you, brother. There's so many people that are going to be impacted by that donation of just your hair. Wow. Incredible. That's a lot of hair to come off, too. It is. That's a flowing, beautiful mane he's got right now. Pass up top. Caught at the 50. What a grab by Taylor Morin. Working against Marquez Williams. Sam Hartman has made a decision that when he gets his guys one-on-one -on -one down the field, he is going to take the shot and trust that they're going to make the play. Holding. Defense. Number 14, penalty to fly. Result of the play, first down. You know what they say sometimes, Mark, is that when you can't cover them, hold them. Okay. And right here, they do a little fake screen and go, and Taylor Moore locates the ball and does what receivers do. <laughs> Track it, bring it in. Marquez Williams had no other choice but to hold because it was going to be a touchdown, he, and he did. He held him twice on that play, Robert. <laughs> he really did. Held him like a grudge. 33-yard gain. 4-11 to go. Wake Forest moving the ball quickly here at midfield. Hartman gets it out. Pass complete to Roberson. Well, the Dr. Pe Pepper tuition giveaway is coming up, folks. Stay tuned to watch two deserving students compete for a life-changing grand prize of $100,000 in tuition from Dr. Pepper. Is that, mm. that tax-free? Hey, the best nation in the world is a donation. Up top. Roberson couldn't get to it, trying to get in behind Hallett. And it's incomplete, setting up a third down and five. Hallett having a little discussion with that official in the sidelines. This pit defense, they like to put eight guys in the box, one-on-one -on -one coverage. You see right here, oh wow, he's got his hand on the face mask, pushing, pushing the defender away. Eric Hallett could have been a penalty right there. They look like one. Third down and five instead. He gets it out quickly. Perry makes the catch, and he'll get the first down at the 37-yard line. Man, right now, Wake Forest is not only making the routine plays, they're making the tough plays. And I think that's why they're being able to sustain these drives. If they can maybe hit that one-two punch over the top with a post, with the safety coming down on a basic, whoo! We could be in for a doozy all night long. Yeah, Perry with his fifth catch. Nowhere to go this time for Beal Smith. And he's going to lose a few yards all the way back to the 42. Deslin Alexander making the tackle on the play. Alexander was extremely confident when we spoke with him earlier yesterday. And we have a injured, Wake Forest player. player injured. That's Beal Smith who was a little nicked up. But there's a look at one of the captains. Deslin Alexander had a great conversation with him. He talked about what a championship would mean for this program and for this class, this team. He said, it's going to happen. He was literally trying to speak it into existence while we were speaking with him. Big night for him. Said his parents were coming up from Pompano Beach, Florida. Yes, and Deslin Alexander was born in Haiti. Right, he moved over here when he was three years old, and he talked about his journey going through injuries, not starting football until his junior year right. in high school. 
and and he was a basketball player. Hey, right? they got a good squad at Pompano Beach High School. And he said, listen, point blank, look me in my eyes. He said, <laughs> hey, I could dunk on Quinn Kessidy, okay? <laughs> He's trying to get a turnover so they could do the turnover dunk on the sideline. Yeah, yeah. That was one of his goals. I was a wrestler. That's not saying much. Hey, <laughs> you can tackle him, though, Hugh. You, you can pin him. Single leg, lift, trip, yep. take him down. Always be aware of the wrestlers, especially the small ones. Oh, hey. they've, they've got some nice talent coming out of South Florida on this Pittsburgh roster. And Deslin Alexander, whenever you ask a guy, hey, what makes you the best? Right. And, you, and he says, I play harder than everybody else. That's a guy that you want on your team. He's not only talented at 6'4", 285 pounds, but he's got a motor. And he is a reason that this defense is playing as well as they have throughout the year. But they got to pick it up today. Hartman hands it off. That's Justice Ellison who checked into the ball game for the injured Beal Smith. Third down coming up. Gain of three on the play. Let's listen to this one. Man, they're bringing some knock. All kinds of smoke. AKA bringing the wood. <laughs> Nick Skiba has a long of 53 yards. First team all ACC. Wake Forest place kicker. Knows the ball resting at the 37. Make it 38 actually. Hartman going to be sacked and that's going to take them out of potential field goal range. Servassier. For another shot of Servassier. I was about to say, Servassier Dennis, I mean, sounds like a fine wine. <laughs> and he is looking fine out there right now, making plays, getting to the quarterback. They, these are the stops, right, that we right. talked about. When you're on offense and you're clicking, it's 21 to 21. The defense has to step up in crucial situations. And right here, he just gets skinny right there between the tackle and the guard and lets him know, hey, yeah. <laughs> see y'all later. That two could stand for second team all ACC as well. Dennis, a native of Syracuse, New York. Lock running with 104 to go and Clawson calling timeout now for the Demon Deacons. I can tell you what, Jonesy, if uh, if everybody at home was was knocking one back every time Servasi hey, Dennis made a play, they might not be walking at the end of the night. Yeah, that's a good point. Well, we spoke with the conference commissioner a little bit earlier. The footprint of the ACC is very far reaching, covering some very talent rich states when it comes to football and a lot of TV eyeballs on the ACC as a conference. It's one of those things that when it comes to recruiting, why wouldn't you want to come play in the ACC, right? According to that qualitative analysis that you just put on the screen. Oh. <laughs> 40-20. Mora into punt. And this is going to land inside the five. They couldn't down it in time. 46 yards on the punt. It'll come back out with 55 seconds to go. We've well, it seen. Makes, we've makes seen. You, yeah, I was going to say, it makes you wonder. Right. With all the conference realignment going right. on, is, is that a possibility for the ACC as well down the road to start picking off some teams from these other conferences? Well, it's funny because as I look at Coach Narduzzi, the last time Pitt won a conference championship, it was in the Big East. They have never won an ACC title. At the stated goal tonight, Vincent Davis in a tailback. Narduzzi, Narduzzi says it's we, not me. That is the team credo and motto this year. Davis with a nice sprint to the left side, steps out of bounds right near the first down marker. They had a great week of practice. Coach Whipple telling us that Robert they went 72 of 72 in skeleton drill this week as Pickett hands it off for another run. Good move by Davis at the line of scrimmage. He picks up five. What does that mean to the casual viewer. Yeah, skeleton drill aka skelly what we call it <laughs> seven on seven. It's just an opportunity to go through the passing concepts. And you know I don't know if that's a, a, a determination of how well the offense is doing or right. how bad that scout team is. <laughs> <laughs> 72 out of 72 is impressive. Pickett Addison at the other end of that frozen rope. It melts in his arms and a first down at the 33. He was working against Zion Keith. 
We've been wondering, when is Jordan Addison going to get one of those big old receptions that we've been seeing him get all year? And right there, he sets up the defender perfectly. Kenny Pickett looks away the coverage, comes back to him, fires it down the seam, playing high-level football by both of those men right there. Picked those up Sunday guys. Picked up 32 yards. And uh, Pickett, who you were on early in terms of the Nissan Heisman watch as we take a look at Robert's top four with tonight's Nissan Heisman watch. No surprise that you brought his name up before a lot of people actually jumped on that bandwagon. Is. And when you watch the tape of Kenny Pickett, I was astounded at how well he was playing and how no one was talking about him. I was getting messages on Twitter about, hey, you look at Kenny Pickett, look at Kenny Pickett. And when I turned on the tape, immediately I said, I got to put this guy on my list. He's there with Bryce Young, Matt Carell, and C.J. Stroud. And when I posted that, I tagged him in it. And I can tell you, he just has something about him. He shot me a DM after I tagged him in the post to put him on, on my Heisman list. And it was just simply a handshake emoji. Mm. To me, that let me know that he was confident. He, he knows who he is. He knows how good his team is and where they want to go. This guy definitely deserves to be in New York. Hey, he had a fake slide, and he just slid into your DM yeah. like that, huh? <laughs> oh, my goodness. What yes, about he that? did. First and 10 from the 28. Pick it. Looking to pull the trigger. Toss. One on one on the sideline and incomplete. There's a flag down on the play. Shockey Jacques-Louis. Looks like it's going to be another defensive holding away from the throw. Holding. Defense. Number 28. 10 yard penalty result in a first down. And that's the second one, I believe, on Zion Keith. He's just, he's holding guys off the ball when they get to the, the point where they make the break. And he's right here. You see him holding the guy or holding Jordan Addison like wow. we, we talked about why he's been throwing to him maybe it's because they're holding him every time there it is. he's running down the field just 10 seconds to go here in the first half clock management becomes paramount now for the Panthers picking is thrown to eight different receivers for completions Addison in motion to the bottom of your screen low snap gets it up in the air for Addison no flag this time, incomplete. Addison wasn't expecting the pass. Holmes there in on the coverage. Looking for a little divine intervention and getting some as he looks heavenward. Five seconds to go and in comes the field goal unit. And I know Coach Narduzzi is just crossing his fingers hoping that his kicker can knock yeah. this one through after what we saw from that first one. Yeah. But I've seen this offense make a concerted effort to stay away from Jasir Taylor and always work on Gavin Holmes motioning Jordan Addison across the formation. They definitely think they have a mismatch there, but Gavin Holmes has played better than you would, than they think. Starting from 41 yards out, missed earlier from 49. This one is pure. Knocks it through to end the first half of play. What well, started off with a frenetic and frenzied scoring output early is 24-21. At the half. Stay tuned. At the end of the half, we'll send you to the studio for the Capital One halftime report. Amen. Welcome back to Dr. Pepper Championship Week. Unexpected. Well, that's an understatement. Two unlikely teams undervalued. The slide. Sauce time. Underrated. Did you, did you see that? And overlooked. That sound you hear is the refrain of we hear. You understand? Back in Charlotte, this is the Subway ACC Championship as part of Dr. Pepper championship week and what a week and what a day it's been in college football Pitt leading here 24 to 21 Wake Forest did not score in that second quarter after putting 21 on the board in the first 15 minutes can he pick it a big part of the storyline moving forward and the one that has gone by for the Panthers he's already rewritten the ACC passing touchdown record book and had one of the season I'm going to say one of the season's best moves for a touchdown. We'll talk about it in just a moment. Pittsburgh will kick off. The Demon Deacons will receive the football 
after deferring to the second half, they won the opening toss. Yeah, and in that first half, we had a whole lot of yards, 505 yards of total offense, a whole lot of points. And as you said, both quarterbacks throwing and running the ball effectively. These are the number three and four teams in scoring offense in the country. It'll come out first and 10 from the 25 for the Demon Deacons. Now here's a look at the play I was alluding to a moment ago on the opening drive of the game for Pitt. Pickett fakes the slide right there and then continues. You see the defender number 45 right there for Wake Forest pull up and stop. And as we bring in our official supervisor, Matt Austin, Matt, what do you make of that play and the deception by Pickett? Well, I, I really wish the officials on the field had shut it down at this point because he's really abusing the play uh, or the, the, the safety that he gets from sliding uh, by faking it. A couple of people checked up. Number six at the bottom of the screen, he also slowed up also. He certainly could have hit him, but he slowed up when he saw the action. Um, I, I do think in the future this will be an emphasis on shutting this type of play down. Yeah, by allowing the quarterback that kind of latitude to fake a slide, now you put the defense seemingly in an unwinnable situation because if you hit him on a slide, then you're penalized 15 yards. If you don't, he runs for a touchdown run. Yeah, it's just abusing the rules. Look, defenders are already at a disadvantage with all these rules, making them have to almost protect the offensive guys already. But you can't fake a knee. You can't fake the slide. Although it was a spectacular play, right there he's using his protection against the defense, and that can't happen. Third and two for Hartman, and he converts on third down. Roberson with the catch. Picks up four to move the chains. Here's another yeah, look on at. the slide. Yeah, yeah, what to start a slide is when the hips begin to drop. And I think in, in this fake, they definitely do start to come down. And that's what tells everybody to hold up. Taking a shot downfield, incomplete for Roberson. Broken up by Hallett. Matt Austin, thanks a lot for clarifying that and uh, moving forward as he said Robert it's going to be interesting to see what the rules committee is going to bring up if they bring it up Matt alluded to the fact it's going to be on the tape for review and they might add that to the list you think of uh, not being able to fake a slide yeah we'll be seeing that play for a long time because it was so exciting but they're going to be using it for a long time to say this is not allowed. Hartman incomplete. Let's go down to Quint. A lot of what Wake Forest does is proprietary on offense. And so Pat Narduzzi, as I was walking off of them towards halftime, said, I'm a lot more comfortable with we, where, how we played in the second quarter defensively than the first. You know, Wake, they run the RPOs, the, the long, slow mesh. It's really triple option football out of sexy formations. And this is the other key. Narduzzi told me, getting their sea legs against the intricate Wake Forest offense and then winning those battles on the outside. He puts his corners on an island like nobody. I mean, it's Gilligan's Island <laughs> every single play, and those corners got to keep winning those battles in space. Well, we were uh, hoping that Darrell Revis was going to show up today. Yeah. And uh, he knows a thing or two about putting guys on an island, former Pitt star and NFL star as well at cornerback. Yes, he does. And it's one of those things on, on defense, if you have a bad play, it can end up being a touchdown. On offense, it might just be second and ten. These DBs are constantly going to have to be clearing their mind when they don't make the play because they're going to be challenged all night. They kick it away from Addison to the point where he doesn't get a chance to return it. It'll be first and ten for Kenny Pickett, who came into this game with 40 touchdown passes. There's the move we were talking about a moment ago, the fake slide for the touchdown. But Sam Hartman has had a lot of different counters and answers of his own and using his legs as well. In the first half, he threw for a couple of touchdown passes and ran for one. This game has lived up to all the hype in terms of the passing and the scoring. High snap, gets away from Pickett. He falls on it all the way inside the 10. That's the second time, Robert, we've seen a bad snap from Jake Cradle. Yeah. Pardon me, from Owen Drexel. Yeah, it looks like Owen Drexel thinks he might be snapping the ball to Yao Ming back mm. there. Mm. But listen, Kenny Pickett's got a back that's bothering him a little bit, and he snapped the ball over his head twice. At some point, he's got to tell Drexel, listen, man, 
<laughs> this ain't basketball. I need you to hit me right between the numbers so I can wow. go out there and execute the game plan. Now they're back there at second and 26. Look for a screen or something because there's not very many play calls for this down and distance. They're going to run it with Vincent Davis over the left side over Carter Warren. The big offensive tackle, Jasheen Davis, makes the tackle for Wake Forest. It'll be third down and long for Kenny Pickett. Tough spot deep in your own territory. What do you think in terms of a play call here? Is it the obvious Addison look? Well, Addison is the guy that they always want to throw the ball to, but on third and a mile. Almost a high snap again. Hey, Addison answers the call, but a little bit short of that first down by about a yard and a half. And Addison is getting up slowly here for the Panthers. That would be a big loss for the Panthers, as you called it. Mark Jones, Addison time. It's Addison time on first down, yeah. second down, third down. Four, and if they had five downs, they'd throw it to him on that one as well. He's a dynamic wide receiver. Kenny Pickett trusts him. And who else would you throw the ball to on, on third and forever to give yourself an opportunity? That shows you the confidence that Mark Whipple not right. only has in his quarterback, but his offensive line and his playmakers to go make a play. Good to see Addison get up and walk off the field it's interesting I said earlier that he's a finalist for the Bolitnikoff Award when it was announced earlier in the week one of the coaches walked in and gave the receivers room and the receiving coaches the word and Addison looked over and just kept watching film wasn't moved at all by the accolade or being a finalist for the award he's all about handling his business and his work it's a byproduct of hard work a byproduct of the preparation that they put in. They're not surprised that they're up for the Heisman or the Belitnikoff right. or whatever it may be. Listen, if they had to live in a house based off of the work they put in in the offseason, they feel very, very strong about that foundation. And I don't know if everybody in the country can say that about their own hard work, but we all got to work towards that. Chris Tadoulou's punt comes down at the 27-yard line. It'll be first and 10 from there. And Wake Forest, you know, you got to love the story of this program. And Coach Clawson, the ACC Coach of the Year this year, their intent was to go from good to great. I would say check in oh. that department, Robert. Oh, in spades. They've gone from good to great. Listen, they're here. They're not happy to just be here. They want to win this game, and they're showing themselves really great on, on the field. And Sam Hartman's a big part of that. He's got to keep making good decisions. Hands it off to Turner. And as for Clawson, the recipient of a contract extension in this day and age, Robert, where coaches are very transient, very itinerant in their travels, quick to pick up and move, as we saw with Brian Kelly earlier this week. It's great to see Clawson stay and finish the work where he is at Wake Forest in his eighth season looking forward to many more successful ones. Yes, Dave Clawson, he stressed to us that everyone wants to say, well, they've got seven super seniors. Right. So that's why they're so good, and they're an old team. <laughs> and he said, listen, we have 54 freshmen on scholarship. They're not just good because of their super seniors and the guys that they've had come back from last year. They have the ability to have long-term success, and that's why he signed that extension. Third and two. Hartman completes it. For the first down, good catch by Roberson. Q has more on Clawson and Wake Forest. Yeah, he has patented the blueprint in terms of recruiting, the right fit, the retention, and the development. This is a roster that's got tons of three-star players getting five-star production. Whether they're an inch too short, a, a, a tick too slow, can't make the big play, and here we go. Hartman's deep, but th this program, and because of that, they operate with such a chip on their shoulder, Mark. Yeah, they, they're, uh, they're underdogs in everything they do, and they love that. They love that. Boy, the little train, the little engine that could, that's Damari Mathis down in the field. Pittsburgh cornerback in on the coverage on the play. We're going to take a short break. Be right back after this. Welcome back everyone to Bank of America Stadium. The late Maya Angelou, American heroine and poet, said hope and fear cannot occupy the same space. Invite one to stay. She was a former professor at Wake Forest University. 
And with Wake Forest in mind, Robert, I think we all know which one the Demon Deacons invited to stay. And it wasn't fear. They have been fearless all season on so many different fronts. And of course, the acronym for fear is false evidence appearing real. Yes. They haven't been fooled this year. They haven't. And Dave Clawson, ACC Coach of the Year, said it's a team award and their vision is to win championships here. And he said that way back in 2013 when he first got here. And now they have an opportunity to get it done. Hartman going to tuck that football away. We were talking about how loose it was earlier. Alexander with the tackle. And you see here, Sam Hartman's got his eyes down the field. He sees the rush, understands he has an opportunity, but right there he Ooh. has to tuck the ball away. You see these defenders are coming in. They've noticed it. Their coaches are telling them, hey, man, he's out there carrying the ball like a loaf of bread. You got a player injured on the field at the 42-yard line. It's Turner. Christian Turner, the tailback out of Buford, Georgia, 5'11 sophomore. The pace of this game, Robert, for both these teams, has slowed down noticeably. It has in, since the first quarter. In a game where uh, defensive coordinator Randy Bates, he said, uh, you know, we're expecting 80 to 90 plays, but you talk about how it started and, and how it's going. Picked fifth in the Atlantic. Now they're in their first championship game since 2006. Man, I was in high school in 2006. Yeah, I don't, know, I don't know where you were at in 2006, <laughs> but. But but listen, 2018. Actually. Oh, my bad. 2018 yeah, for but, Pitt. Yeah, for Pitt. 2018 but it's 2006 for the first title for Wake Forest. So it's just incredible what they've been able to do with what they have. And uh, I hope everybody's enjoying this game tonight. More at a punt. Gets off a good one. Angles it towards the sideline. Addison again with no opportunity to return that 2006 man you were in high school right huh high school 2006 yeah yeah I was in high school graduated right. 2008 all right you know uh, I had a little money in my pocket at that oh, time you had a lot of money but you caught up though <laughs> <laughs> the subway ACC championship game on ABC is brought to you by cinnamon toast crunch blasted with cinna dust Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear with you for every mile on the road to greatness. Goodyear, more driven. Tremendous shots from high above Bank of America Stadium. And the Deacon fans showed up tonight, as did the Pitt faithful. A couple of 10 and 2 teams, both 7 and 1 in conference play, vying for the championship here tonight. Rodney Hammond, the freshman in a tailback, takes this carry over the right side, picks up about two yards on the play. Brought down by Ryan Smenda. Robert, what do you make of the pace that's slowed down to a crawl almost? I just think it's a war of attrition on both sides. The offensive coordinators are deep and dig into their bag because they've already put up some points, and the defense are getting tired. Pickett wearing out that defense on that play. Addison lost his balance. Zion Keith was the defender on the play, and Addison picks up the first down, got 10. When you talk about that war of attrition, defensive coordinator Lyle Hemphill said, look, man, we know we're going to play a lot of plays, so we're going to have to play a lot of guys. And I think that's what you're seeing a little bit. These teams are both getting a little tired. They're going to have to get back into that bag, right, mm. and make sure that they start executing at a high level offensively again. Pickett looking into the boundary, completes the pass. That was to Rodney Hammond coming out of the backfield. Got about six on the play, second down and four. Kenny Pickett said that he had a chance to meet Sam Hartman at the uh, Manning Passing Academy. So he loves Hartman's game, makes all the throws, runs it, a competitor. Great head-to-head -head battle tonight between those two. Rodney Hammond running for the first down. You know, Quint, Quint Kessenick down on the sideline said that Pat Narduzzi talked about his defense getting their sea legs, and I think you're seeing that from both sides. The okay. quarterback maybe might get a little tired of making the easy reads and making the easy throws. The defense is attacking more. 
So these offenses have to get back to the basics. Pickett fires a strike to Addison again. It's going to be marked at about the 48-yard line. Jasir Taylor, the defender on the play. I think if you're tracking this game closely, you'll understand that, like Pitt, for example, 183 of their 208 passing yards coming to this drive were on eight plays. Eight plays of 15 yards or more. So they're shutting down the big plays a little bit, and that's why these teams are starting to struggle a little offensively. Keeping it on the ground this time with Rodney Hammond brought down by Smenda. Meanwhile, Addison, that last catch was his sixth of the ball game for 94 yards. Third down and short coming up for the Panthers. They empty it out. Empty formation, five receivers. Pickett, Addison into a tight window, and it's incomplete. Fourth down coming up, Zion Keith there to break it up in the secondary. Fourth down and two, interesting decision here coming up for Narduzzi. This one came loose. He had it momentarily, but yeah. great effort by the defense. Seems like Jordan Addison, one of the best receivers in the country, also saw Ryan Smenda, okay. number five, right there on the inside. Trust me, wide receivers know their surroundings, and when they go across the middle, they understand when they got to get down. He just needed to pull that one in a little tighter so that when they hit him, it didn't come loose. Chris Tadula with his fourth punt of the game. Knows the football down, end over end punt. Fielded cleanly by Morin. It'll be first and ten from there. Well, week 13, Monday Night Football with Peyton and Eli, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN2. They'll be breaking down the Patriots and the Bills with special attention paid to the quarterbacks, rookie Mac Jones and Josh Allen. It's always great to see who the special guests are going to be, too. Monday Night Football coverage also available on ESPN as well as the ESPN app. You know, you keep bringing up how Kitty Pickett and Sam Hartman were both at the Manning camp, and I'm, I'm pretty sure they just make them go there and work. Okay. It's just free labor for them. <laughs> <laughs> Counselors. <laughs> Hartman taking a shot deep. Incomplete at the 45 intended for Perry. Couldn't win that one-on-one -on -one against Devonshire. Pardon me, that was against Donald Stewart. And this is what we're talking about with Wake Forest in these big plays on both sides. Their last six drives, they've had five punts and an interception. So what Pitt's defense is doing is in those one-on-one -on -one matchups down the field, they're winning more than they're losing. So Wake isn't able to put together long drives. They run it between the tackles. That's going to be a yard gain for Justice Ellison, setting up a long third down for the Demon Deacons. And this is perfect for what defensive coordinator Randy Bates wants to do. Right? They stop the run force them to throw, and then it's just a matter of them making plays on the ball to get Wake off the field. Third and eight isn't where they want to be. Hartman tackled and sacked at the three. Keyshawn Camp. Keyshawn Camp looks like he was camping out in the backfield. That number 10 looks really good on him, too. He's out there getting jiggy with it, and this defensive line, that they lead uh, they're one of the leading teams in all the country in sacks. And what is it? It's a relentless pursuit. Mm. Sam Hartman is holding on to the ball, but it's not like he's holding on, on to it too long. There's no one to throw the ball to because they're all covered. This pit defense is really stepping up. Fourth sack of the game for them, Robert. Mora punting out of his own end zone. A high spiral kicks it away from Addison. That has been the formula for the Demon Deacons since the first punt of the game tonight when he returned one 40 odd yards yeah you don't ever need to kick to that guy it's just they when learn it, when, you, when you put up the scouting report on special teams you just say hey hey kick it out of bounds don't even get near this guy it's uh that's a smart decision right there 633 to go in the third quarter in a low scoring second half so far Back here at Bank of America Stadium, first down and 10 for Pitt at the 45-yard line. 6.33 to go in the third. 
Offense is trying to regain their footing here. Respective defenses with the upper hand. Addison went in motion. Pickett going to take a shot deep. Addison got him there. Incomplete. Broken up at the 10 by Taylor. No flag on the play. Right here, Addison gets a little bit of contact there before the ball gets there, but apparently the ref said it wasn't enough. Mm. Mr. Taylor there might have gotten away with one. They run a nice double post concept across the field, and Kenny Pickett delivered a bomb. Going to hand it off this time. Vincent Davis wrapped up right around the line of scrimmage. Smenda, the first one to get there. Quint. Coming to Pitt saved my life. That's the words of Randy Bates, defensive coordinator, 61-year-old, a cancer survivor. Why did coming to Pitt save his life? Well, they made him get a physical, and they found cancer in his tonsil. He had surgery. He lost 30 pounds. He had radiation treatment. This was back in 2019. He's healthy now. He's been back in the booth. He hasn't missed a step. And this family of Pitt football along the way has gotten Coach Bates through a very difficult situation. And he is now cancer free. Holding defense number six. Penalty for Clyde. Result of the play. First round. It's V Week at ESPN, and our partnership with the V Foundation highlights the urgent need for cancer research and the elimination of racial disparities in cancer outcomes. You can learn more and help support by visiting v.org slash donate. 100% of your donation goes directly, directly to cancer research. v.org slash donate. Pickett completes one to Jared Wayne at the 35-yard line. I had the honor of working with Jim Valvano for several years in college basketball at ESPN and you know, uh, we continue to pray for a complete recovery for our colleague, Dick Vitale, who seemed to be and is doing well. Heard him on a broadcast the other day, knocking out the park as usual. Vincent Davis on the run and a late flag throw. Oh, looks like a flag for taunting on Schmenda, right? It looked like a little roughhousing going on. Smenda with his palm skyward. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Number five. Defense. Taunting. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. That is number five. First Let's bring in life. our rules analyst Matt Austin. Tell us about this play Matt and the interpretation. Well, standing over in a player or getting in his face and puffing up his arms like he did, that's taunting. That's going to get you a flag every time. Yeah, they need to change that rule, Matt. <laughs> I mean, that, that's kind of football. I, I don't get that. I get, but I guess if that's a rule, maybe the rule needs to be looked at. That was after some of the unsportsmanlike calls that we've seen. Pick it. Com incomplete intended for Crow. You know, it was Kenny Pickett that said, we put his quote up on a graphic a, mo graphic a moment ago, says, you have to play with that fire. And the on and off switch is arbitrary with a lot it's of people. It's kind of hard to find. <laughs> I remember last week, I believe, we, we actually had a play where a player hit a guy in the face, yeah. and they didn't say anything. And look, even the Wake Forest yeah. fans yeah. are saying, are you kidding me, yeah. man? They need, to, they need Listen, to look at that rule. And they're about to whip out their calculators and, and uh, commit math I'd be, crimes yeah, against them. I'd be happy if they took it out of the game altogether. Davis in to protect, now slides out, yes. incomplete to the sideline, intended for Lucas Kroll again, working against Taylor. It'll be third and long, and Wake Forest bringing in defensive personnel here what do you like for a call here for Kenny Pickett in the offense for the Panthers Robert what I've seen defensively from both teams is a, a lot of one-on-one -on -one matchups they're loading the box trying to make the other offense one-dimensional so what about what would I do I'm still throwing the ball to the best player on the field Jordan Addison number three I'm gonna find him and I'm gonna work him first as my first read if I'm Kenny Pickett as you see him go in motion right there 
that stops him and sends him in the other direction. Flag down. Full start. Offense. All 11 players will not set for one second. Five yard penalty. Still third down. So they're going to move it back a little bit against Coach Narduzzi's squad. They said all 11 guys weren't set for yeah. a second. But Jordan Addison going in motion there. Pitt knew where he, I mean, uh, Wake Forest knew where he was. They had him doubled. They had a double team on him, which is smart on their part. But now let's see. This is Jordan Addison right here in the slot. Looks like he might have a one-on-one -on -one matchup. Pickett looks the other way. Goes through his progression. Swarmed and swallowed at the 40. That Demon Deacon defense, Chase Jones and Jasheen Davis there. And it looks like Wake Forest and that much maligned defense just came up with a big stop, pushing it to fourth and 29. And it's really just a twist game up the middle by the linebackers, Luke Masterson and Chase Jones saying, hey, Kenny Pickett, you got to get off your spot, buddy. If you don't, we're going to take you down. And that took them out of field goal range for what little hope they did have of kicking one. All the way back to the 37. Kirk Christodoulou will get a punt. Nose of the football down. This will land inside the 15 yard line, so he does a nice job of making Wake Forest start a little deeper than they would have liked. 25 yard punt. First and 10. Sunday at noon, the final college football playoff rankings coming up. Huge day, huge night in college football when you look at Baylor with the last second win, touchdown saving tackle to defeat Oklahoma State in the Big 12 championship. Iowa and Michigan playing right now in the Big Ten. Cincinnati winning the American Conference. And Alabama, of course, stunning Georgia. Cooley on the run. And brought down just shy of the 20-yard line by Cam Bright. Clock running with three and a half minutes to go in the third. Here's a look at it. Yeah, you got Georgia there, right? Upset by Alabama. I don't know how much of an upset it was, but... Needless to say, Georgia's undefeated and they got beat, and that kind of throws a wrench in the CFP ring. Out of the backfield, this is Quentin Cooley. Picks up the first down. So tell me your final four right now. Well, if, right. if things trend as they're heading right now in this second. Yeah, if things trend the way they're heading, you have Georgia in there. Alabama just beat them, so Alabama probably goes to one. Michigan, get, Michigan gets in, and Cincinnati makes it. Right? I, I love my Baylor Bears. And yes. they beat Oklahoma State. Yes. But Alabama beating Georgia is the thing that's going to keep them out of it. I don't okay. think that they're going to allow a two-loss Big 12 team to jump Cincinnati. They're a conference champion. Right. But in this situation, listen, I'm probably the biggest Baylor Bear fan out there. I, I've seen and you run in the Baylor line. And, I and know. that's just the reality <laughs> of it. Cincinnati has been undefeated. They have earned their spot in the CFP, in my opinion. I don't have a vote, yeah. but that's how I would put it. Luke Fickle's done a great job with that squad all year, actually going back to last season. They lost in their bowl game a season ago on a last-second field goal against the Georgia Bulldogs. So this has not been something that came out of the blue. They were very deserving of their New Year's Six Bowl a season ago as well. 305 to go here in the third quarter. And this Wake Forest offense, right? First 12 minutes of the game, they had 21 points. They've had zero <laughs> since. I don't understand it, but they got to figure it out. Hartman. Oh, he got rocked. Full smoke from Kansi, who's back in the ball game and announced it right there to Hartman. Oh, Kawaja Kansi hit that man so hard. Right, Sam Hartman's on the ground just saying, I just want to live. Here it is right here, long mesh. Steps up in the pocket, tries to make something happen. Ooh, Lord have mercy. He got hit. They used him to get up off the ground. Lord, check on that man. On second and 10, Hartman on the out pattern, batted away nicely by Marquez Williams, the DB. Defending Taylor Moore and 
who has at times eviscerated that secondary, but not on that occasion. Third and ten coming up for the Demon Deacons again. Yeah, this the first quarter of this game, there's a lot of points. Hartman down the middle of the field. Is it picked off? Almost, but not quite. Boy, in and out of the arms of Hallett. They're going to give it to him? Yes. They will. Far side official was slow to call it. Well, you, you see Eric Hallett here. He must be a juggler in real life. He goes right here, juggles the ball a little bit, makes sure it doesn't hit the ground, gets the interception. Oh, Kansi blocked our view on this angle. He was really chill about the whole thing. He really was. He wasn't sure if he caught it either. Here's another look. Yeah, he caught that he one. Caught he got it. his hands underneath the kept it off the ground. That and is. the interception was a byproduct of the pressure on Sam Hartman. That hit where I said, man, he just wants to live, right? Right. He didn't his want to defense, take another one. He didn't want to take another one. He threw the ball before he was ready, before his receiver had an opportunity to get his eyes to the ball. But right there, Eric Hallett comes up with the interception. And he got the turnover dunk. Oh, yeah. little windmill. They Hallett got, got some bounce there. In terms of style points, Robert, what do you think? I'm, I'm giving him a an 8.75. Wow. An 8.75 for yeah. that dunk? Yeah. Did you see how low the goal was? Yeah, he, he could have at least went, style in the air, he though. He could have at least went through the legs or something. I think Q could have dunked that one. He's every bit of 4-3. <laughs> Q gets shorter, every, uh. uh, shorter and shorter every week. <laughs> I'd be hanging on that rim all night long. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, there's been a major energy shift in this building. I don't know if you guys can feel it up top. You're, you're amongst uh, the pit fans. But on this Wake Forest sideline, kind of dull stares, offensive line problem solving, Sam Hartman on the phone. They, they need a Snickers bar. They need some energy. Wow. They, they don't have, act the same when they're hungry, huh, Well, oh, they, they lost a lot of their juice. And maybe that has something to do with Pittsburgh's defense. But, but look at the score. He used his face mask he did. to help control the football. Sometimes they tell you to use your head. Yeah. He did it right there. But look at the score if you're a Wake Forest fan. It's 24 to 21. Get your team up. Get them excited. you got to make noise. One more look at it. Gets his hands underneath the ball. Juggles it a little bit. Uses his head to maintain it. He showed it to the officials. He wasn't eating. It's mine. <laughs> Benakanda in the backfield and flag down. We've seen a lot of linen down here in the second Five half. The snap. Ball start. Number 76. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still first down. This game was played so crisply for the right. first quarter and a half. First 15 minutes. And, yep. and since then, it's. It's just been going backwards a little bit. You know, missed throws here, turnovers there, penalties. 14 penalties, Robert, between the two teams so far. And, and very uncharacteristic of Wake as well, being plus 11 in the turnover margin. And tonight, tonight they're minus two. Pickett hands it off to Abenakanda. Got those shoulders north-south, squared them up, and picks up a nice first down. For the Panthers. Oh my, did you see the assistant on the sideline just lay the boom on the Vanaganda? I mean, he, he said, look at him. He's like, yeah, I told him, get your weight up, son. Get in the weight room. Boy, he, that's a lot of beef. Hey, he's wearing one of those medium shirts, though. <laughs> you see him right here. He's going out of bounds. He thinks, it, he thinks he's in a safe zone. Bathroyd pushes him right into him. Oh, he said, oh, he even threw a shimmy to him. He said, oh, my bad, coach. I ain't mean to. Yeah, that's right. You better watch out. Better Candace said, <laughs> you don't want to smoke. <laughs> you don't want to smoke with that. Look, those barrel chested uh, guys, hey. you got to stay away from but them. But he, he is wearing a medium, man. That's, that's in between a medium. And, well, uh, he did. He did that's he did between arm. medium and large. Man. He had leg day today. That, that's just it what was he, a chest that, day. That's what he normally looks like. It's this leg day. <laughs> you got Drizzy behind him and everything. <laughs> Second down and two. <laughs> Madison split to the bottom of your screen, but they hand it off. Then Akanda tripped up. Nice tackle by DJ Taylor to limit that gain to four yards. 
You know, Mark Whipple talked to us this week and said that he thought Wake Forest defense struggled in space. Okay. But right now, they are tackling really well in open space, and that's why these plays aren't going out. Pick it. Downfield, Addison. Boy, back shoulder catch. What a play by Addison. Yeah, those hands are working for him. And if your first name is Jordan, you know you can ball in any sport. Holy defense, number 24. Picked up 20 for the first down, Robert. Yeah, so we, we talked about Kenny Pickett and his ball placement uh, as, as we started this show. And right here, he does a phenomenal job getting outside the pocket, making the throw. And Jordan Addison, that's an HBO right there. Help a brother out, okay? He's got great body control, oh, yeah. uses his hands, and then he looks at him like, I can't even believe I did that. Yeah, he got all the channels. <laughs> Under a minute to go. Third quarter. Panthers driving. They're going to run it. Vanikanda. Great move. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. He shook Gavin Holmes to get into the end zone. His real name is Israel, but they like to call him Izzy. And boy, did he get jiggy with it on that run. Izzy Abanakanda sees the backside cut, knows he's got the speed to make it, makes a guy miss, and then he's just hitting the Lion King in the end zone. Ha! Abanakanda! <laughs> the extra point is good. And we are looking at a 10-point Panther lead as time winds down and a lugubrious look etched across the face of one of the Wake Forest fans. Izzy to the hizzy. The sign said it all. 47 seconds to go in the period. Look at this move. Yeah, he just understands on the counter run that he can get backside, and he says, Mr. DJ Taylor, you can't run with me. And he says, Gavin Holmes, you got one hand out here. You got a cast on the other one. You can't tackle. And he gets into the end zone. As you said, Izzy to the hizzy. Focious. <laughs> Pittsburgh leading by 10. Manikanda was a little bit shook up and injured coming into the game tonight but after going through his pregame warm-ups obviously okay to play came into the game averaging over five yards per carry that's his sixth rushing touchdown of the season oh he got the camera for him on the <laughs> sideline hey, too go to doozy's guys having fun down there robert griffin the third that's the only way to play the game <laughs> He got his own hype man, too. Yeah, and then you, this is the play that set it all up, right? There was a holding call on the defense, but Jordan Addison just making an beautiful back shoulder catch. And then as you continue oh. to watch, he's just sitting there saying, man, I can't even believe I did that. He was, he was looking at his namesake, Jordan, right, when he was hitting all them threes, <laughs> saying, I don't know, man. That was it. Just some of us got it and some of us don't. That was it. First and ten, Hartman trying to... Snatch back some of that momentum. Beal Smith on the carry. Nowhere to go. Picks up two on the play. Keyshawn Camp out of Lakeland, Florida says, no, not here. It'll be second down and eight. 32 seconds to go. Dave Clawson's offense stuck in neutral for the last couple of quarters. Hartman searching for that button. Downfield. And it's caught right on the sidelines by Taylor Morin. Man, what a grab. And that's just what the doctor ordered. Taylor Morin coming up with a big play down the field. It's what Wake Forest needed to get their spark back. Came back to the football here, Robert, and got those feet in bounds. And moved the chains. And we have a Pittsburgh player shaken up, Keyshawn Camp, who made that play just a couple of moments ago defensively. Coming this week on Sunday NFL Countdown, before the Ravens and Steelers renew their rivalry, Lamar Jackson goes one-on-one -on -one with Steve Young. Plus, Randy Moss sits down with Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. Kick off your Sunday with Countdown at a special start time, 9 a.m. Eastern on ESPN.
before the college football playoff is revealed. You know I'm going to be texting or calling you when those four come out. Hey. I'll, if, oh. you, if you don't have it right, I'm going to have to give you some you work. You're going to have to give me some work? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be right there with him. Look, I'm really excited about this. College football season has right. been phenomenal, right? Coming back, the fans are back. Unbelievable atmosphere here the in Charlotte. The pageantry is back. Everything that you just love about the sport is on full display. And uh, you talk about that play right there with Taylor Moore coming back to the ball. That's why Sam Hartman has given his receivers so many chances down the field because he trusts them. And that's how you get a quarterback to continue to have confidence in you when he makes a throw and you protect him by coming back to the mm. ball. 14 seconds to go in the third quarter from the 44. It's first and 10 for Sam Hartman. Completes the pass to Perry, pardon me, Roberson. Those bookend receivers with a lot of physical similarities. Down to the 47, picks up nine on the play. Sam Hartman's favorite quarterback to watch at the next level is Aaron Rodgers. And he could use a little of that Rodgers comeback ability right now. And that's the end of the first three quarters of play. 15 minutes to go. A key pick by the Panthers and the ensuing slam dunk. But it's not over. We'll be back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Back for the start of the fourth quarter. Demon Deacons with the football. They're going to run it. Christian Beal Smith. It's going to be right at that first down marker. Let's see where they're spotted. And they're going to measure, you know, Sam Hartman wears number 10. And the genesis of him wearing that number is a very heart wrenching story. It goes back to Dimitri Allison, a family friend who moved in with them when he was younger, subsequently became a brother to Sam Hartman who went on to play college football as they grew up together at Elon and Dimitri took his own life while playing football at Elon College. Sam Hartman went through the hardship and the trauma of having to deal with that and he wore number 10 subsequent to that passing of his brother he calls him and Steps onto the field every time he plays football with him in mind and holding him close to his heart. Morin on the sneak. It's going to be close. And yeah, you talk about Demetri Allison and had an opportunity to talk to Sam Hartman. He calls him his brother. He moved in when he was 15, went through right. high school all the way with him. He used to run routes for him in the backyard when he was younger to help him develop as a quarterback. And he passed away just before a state championship game Sam Hartman was playing in. Pass incomplete. And Hartman had a very heavy heart. And they asked him, hey, are you going to play in this game? And he told him, Dimitri would have wanted me to play right. in this game. And when he ran out on the field, he had a different number. His mom said, we didn't recognize him because we saw D Dimitri Allison's number, and it was 10, and it was Sam right. in that number. So he carries his brother with him everywhere that he goes, and hopefully we'll get to share that piece where I got to talk with him with you guys later. Second and 10, Hartman trying to get this offense moving. Sack back at the 50, uh, Baldonado. Quinn has more. Yeah, Hartman has learned that that setback and then others on the football field has led him to really look seriously into, into mental health therapy. It's a guy who uses therapy as a coping mechanism to handle failure, to handle stress and anxiety. Uh, he has learned a lot of lessons and he has flipped a lot of the stigmas. Picks off here, Q. Coming back the other way, A.J. Woods got a convoy on the interception. Still on his feet. Cuts back one more time, picks up a block. Stopped at the two-yard line. 
everything but the pick six. And Hartman having to deal with the turnover here. And these are the moments where Sam Hartman has to understand he can't let one play, one bad play, turn into four or five bad plays. And he's in the middle of that right now. He's got to understand what he's doing, how to get out of it, and understand that this game is still within reach. The game is still with her. He just talked about mental health with him. We just talked about how he goes to therapy to learn how to cope and get himself out of these these uh, these these uh, routes and, and droughts of bad play. He has to understand how to get out of it. A tap into it on the sideline because his team needs it. First and ten, pick it. Backside pressure into the end zone. Caught but short of the end zone. It's Hammond on the catch from the one. It'll be second and goal. And right now, Hartman going into his mental toolbox, no doubt, and working his program. And that's important, right? Guys deal with it all the time. And there's the turnover slam. Oh, that will not get an 8.75. He, he missed it. He blew I, it. I tell you what, his legs are gone. <laughs> if we get a chance to show you a replay of that, that interception return, my guy thought he was fancy like Applebee's, yeah. and he couldn't even make it to the end zone. Second and goal. Pickett trying to keep it himself. Not sure he got in. He was stopped up. There was a nice surge up front from Fox and Davis and Bergen. And here it is. You see Sam Hartman. The pressure's coming. He's trying to make the throw, but him and A.T. Perry are on the same, same page. And J.T. Wood said, oh, give me them cookies. And here he goes running the back. He goes to the right. And he comes back, and he cuts back across the field. And he's like, oh, I'm going to get in the end zone. No, 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 no. My hamstrings are screaming. Yeah, it was time. <laughs> it was time for him to shut it down, and his body let him know. Third and goal coming up for Pitt. Anaconda, who scored a touchdown on the last drive in the backfield, gets the call. Lunging in for the score. Pittsburgh able to convert off that turnover. And that's Bonner. his second rushing touchdown tonight for Abanacanda. Pittsburgh with a little bit more room. And now you see Sam Hartman in the Wake Forest team and Deacons trying to figure out what they got to do. They have to throw the ball down the field, make plays, because that's all they got left today. AT&T Countdown to the College Football Playoff National Championship, Monday, January 10th on ESPN. Back in Charlotte, the Panthers kicking off. Wake Forest actually led 21-14 at one point. But Pittsburgh has gone on a 24-0 run. Nice return by Morin, still on his feet. There's a flag down all the way back around the 20-yard line. Nice return by Morin. Let's see if it stands, though. More times than not, on these returns, it's usually a holding against the return team. During the return, holding, number zero, return team, 10 yard penalty from the, the foul. Automatic, we first down, way far. Yeah, and you'll see the holding's going to occur right there. He's fallen down and he kind of pulls him with him. Kind of. Yeah, kind of, <laughs> you know. Just a little uh, bit. Uh. Yeah, when you talk about Wake Forest now, what do they have to do to be successful? Offensive coordinator Warren Ruggiero said we have to start fast early in the game. Don't get behind by two or three scores. Well, that's already gone. It has to be a passing game now. They don't have enough time on the clock to just run. They're going to have to lean on A.T. Perry and Roberson to make plays down the field. Got to win those one-on-ones. That's what he said. And another pick by Hartman. He's going to crib it. Hallett housed it. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Oh, 
no, oh no, if you're a Wake Forest Demon Deacon fan. But if you're a Pitt Panther, you're excited. Eric Hollett with the interception, taking it back to the house, making it look easy like Sunday morning. Sam Hartman has to get out of his own head. And now we have seen him consecutively almost repeat what happened to him last year against Wisconsin in the right. bowl game. But how they finish is going to yeah. speak volumes about them and the development that Sam Hartman has made over the past year with the things he talked about yeah. going to mental therapy and, and working on his game from a mental aspect. They need him to get out of this rut immediately. You are watching a cataclysmic, catastrophic meltdown right now from the Wake Forest offense. There's no other way to put it. Back-to-back -back interceptions. One a pick six, the other one set up a touchdown. And this was the final one by Hallett. Back after this. The Subway ACC Championship Game on ABC is brought to you by Subway. The Eat Fresh Refresh at Subway. And in part by Ford, built for America. Yak. Hallett with the slam. He yammed it in there, boy. He yammed it. That's an understatement. <laughs> that Carl Malone thing put the hand behind the head. Morin on the kickoff return. Out to the 33-yard line. Let's see what Sam Hartman can do, Robert, here to regain his poise and his composure. He's, He's thrown consecutive interceptions. One for a touchdown. One set up a touchdown. Yeah, and he's almost thrown half the amount of interceptions tonight that he threw all, all season. So for him, if I'm his, his offensive coordinator, Warren Giro, I'm just trying to get a ball completed so he can see it completed to a guy in the same jersey. There it is. It's Roberson, and Roberson gains about seven. It'll be second down and three. Hartman has completed six of his last 16 passes for 43 yards and three interceptions. For Sam Hartman, it's just about seeing it completed, executing the offense one play at a time. Incomplete, misfiring that time for Donald Stewart. It'll be third down and three coming up. And Jonesy, as you know, covering basketball like you do, right. Mr. Basketball, Devin Nair. Okay. When you're playing the you game and, right, and yeah. you're missing, you're missing your threes, you're missing your pull-up game, sometimes you just need to drive to the basket and get to the free throw line True. so you can see the ball go in. Knock a couple of them down so it gets you back in the rhythm, and I feel like that's where Sam Hartman is right now. Warren Ruggiero has to understand that. Hartman surveys, goes through his progression, fires high and complete. His receiver over there fell. That was A.T. Perry incomplete. By the way, you got the wrong guy. I'm still shooting my threes. Oh, you still shooting your threes? <laughs> oh, you just yakking them up there? Yeah. Hey, you over hey. four, you like less than. I'm just going to keep shooting. Just, just like Steve Forbes, the basketball coach at Wake Forest University, and Brooke Savage, his assistant, aggressive on offense, just like Wake Forest is right now. Fourth and three, they have no other option. They're down 24. They got to go for it. Look for them to try to get the ball to A.T. Perry. Got rid of it quickly, in and out of the hands of his receiver. Incomplete for Williams. And Pitt will take over on downs. Now, this is a situation where Sam Hartman makes the right read. He makes the right throw. And his guy, Keyshawn Williams, didn't help a brother out and pull it in to keep the drive rolling. Forty-five twenty-one with 10.59 to go in the fourth quarter. This game broken open in the latter part of the third quarter and early in the fourth. It turned on a couple of interceptions by Sam Hartman, and that left Captain Demon Deacon shaking his head right there. Not feeling like a superhero much right now. You can't match that. <laughs> Victor Davis 
Vincent Davis, pardon me, with a nice run around the right side, picked up four on the play. What a season it's been for Pitt. What a season it's been for Sam Hartman and Wake Forest won their first eight games. Ended up 10 and 2 in the regular season. Pittsburgh with that identical 10 and 2 record. Their only losses coming to Western Michigan and Miami going into this game tonight. And thus far, it just hasn't been their day. Yeah. They can score quickly, but this is a pretty big lead. And I think you've seen the resiliency of this Wake Forest team yeah. as their ability to bounce back after losses. They lost North Carolina, bounced back, got a win. Lost to Clemson, bounced back, got a win. So they still have another game ahead of them this year. Right. And yep. uh, if they don't come back and win this one, you know, they still have a lot to play for in the future. Robert, they'll be going to their sixth consecutive bowl game under Coach Clawson, which is great. Meanwhile, on the other side of the field with Pat Narduzzi and the Panthers, interesting that he had seven players drafted from last year's team, and he actually probably had more talent last year, but the togetherness of this squad has been remarkable. And coming back off of the COVID season last year was pretty wild for them. 23 seniors this year on this Panther squad. They have a great culture that they've built. And Coach Narduzzi likes to talk about their program's pillars, relationships, winning, graduating, and giving back in their community. Check, 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 and check. And their mantra this year, as you mentioned earlier, yeah. is we not me. Yeah. And sometimes they walk around and they say, we, we, but they're not speaking French. Right. They're just letting each other know that they care about each other. They're going to go out there and play for each other. And uh, just you got to be happy if you're a Pitt Panther fan. Yeah. Pat Narduzzi and how he's built up this program. Dan Marino spoke with the team earlier before the game. You've got a Hall of Fame hype man literally in-house. That's a pretty good resource. On second and six, Vincent Davis gets about three. Quint? Earlier this fall, Trey Tipton of Pitt received the Disney Spirit Award. Pat Narduzzi coming into the team facility and announcing that the wide receiver, 25-year-old wide receiver, the winner of this prestigious national award. Tipton is, is a young man who has dealt with setbacks in both in his personal life and his football life. The loss of family members and then uh, a near career ending injury at Pitt led him down a, a dark path towards depression, towards self hurt. Uh, he has bounced back in a big way and he has uh, started a, a group at Pitt called Love and that stands for Living Out Victoriously Every Day. L-O-V-E. It's a group of pit athletes who come together and open up and they talk about mental health. That's been a strong theme tonight. And Trey Tipton has gone a long way. He's taken a bad situation and made it into a tremendously positive one, counseling over 100 athletes at Pitt and uh, opening up and, and making mental health uh, really a part of uh, the standard procedure in terms of uh, peak performance and peak happiness in life. Great job, Q. And it really shows and illustrates how college football can be such a wonderful resource unto itself yeah. in so many different ways and beyond in its community like they've done at these two schools on the field here today. And great job by Trey Tipton. You talk about Trey Tipton. He's been <laughs> he's been at the school since 2015. Mm. Reset right. the game clock to eight minutes, 44 seconds. He's going to get, he get the pension, right? Oh, he has to, right? And he talked about his struggles when he had an injury, and he's had injuries over the course of time, that he got to a dark place so much that he attempted suicide mm. four times, mm. came back, got hurt again, collapsed his lung, came back, tore his ACL, came back. And this dude is a, is a testament to resiliency, and he has a really close relationship with Pat Narduzzi. And his story is one that should be told and sung to the masses. Chris Dulu will try and get this to stop inside the five. Wow, what a great punt. Trey Tipton there making sure that it doesn't go into the end zone. On cue, 
And a handshake from a teammate. Deuces. Sometimes I say remember the name because that man's got game. But this time you got to remember Trey Tipton because he's an inspiration. Welcome back everyone to Charlotte for the Subway ACC Championship game. Mitch Griffiths in the ball game now at quarterback for Wake Forest. Ivalon freshman out of Ashburn, Virginia. Taking it out of the shotgun. After Sam Hartman struggled late in this game, he hands it off to Quinton Cooley. And Cooley gains about four on the play, and it would probably be accurate to guess right now, or not that far off, that Sam Har Hartman's night is probably over. It appears that Coach Dave Clawson is just saving his own superstar from himself right now. And you can see Sam there with his head down. I just want to tell him he's got to keep his head up. Mm. We all have times where things don't go the way with, that we want them to. You know, we work hard, we put in the dedication, and the results just don't turn out in our favor. And I think for him, he's going to have to go back and look at this game, understand what he did wrong, and learn from that. What was your mechanism that you used in-game to get over a couple of bad plays? Maybe you threw an interception or two. Um, Everyone has struggles like that. What, what did you do? Everyone has struggles. I've had struggles in college at, at, at times, and I had struggles in the NFL at times. Uh, for me, it was just trying to get back to the basics, understanding, mm -hmm. okay, maybe I'm a little out of rhythm. Maybe I'm uh -huh. not really seeing the field the way that I need to. Maybe I need to get outside the pocket. Maybe I need to go to my coach and say, Coach, can you give me these plays? Right. Because I feel the most comfortable about these, and I know what I can do and possibly get back into a rhythm. But I can tell you right now, playing football at the quarterback position is one of the hardest things in the entire world to do athletically. And Sam Hartman, as you see him there Look at talking. that. I mean, if body language could write the story, I mean, it's fair to say he looks a little checked out there, Robert. Right? Second and six coming up for his understudy, Mitch Griffiths. And they uh, run it. He's going to set up third down and probably about four to go so they're going to play in a bowl game what do you make of how do you rehabilitate his psyche right now to get him ready for their bowl game I think for Sam Hartman they understood that what the magnitude of this game was mm -hmm. they win they become legends and instead they're having to watch the Pittsburgh Panthers come out here and become legends of their own so he has to understand that one game doesn't make or break you. One throw does not define you. Right. And the year that he's had. Hey, they, uh, they won 10 games this year. They won right? 10 games. He threw 34 touchdown passes and ran for 10 touchdowns before this game. So he is a big part of what they do. And we talked to Warren Ruggiero during the week, and he said, yes, yeah, Sam had some struggles last year in crucial games. He had some struggles in the spring where he had a, a string of four or five days where he just was not playing good football. Right. But he came out on the other side. And I think that's what Sam has to go back and understand that he's going to come out on the other side of this. Laura with the punt. Addison calls for the fair catch at the 45-yard line. First and 10 from there for Kenny Pickett. Well, aerial coverage provided by Goodyear to reach the end zone. All you need is drive. Goodyear, more driven. A lot of the Wake Forest fans have understandably left the building. Headed toward the concourse. A lot of blue and yellow still in the stands here for Pitt. Saw Dan Marino down on the field. Had a chance to speak with former Pitt quarterback earlier this week, John Congemi, one of the school's all-time leading passers give me a great scout on their squad <laughs> John does a great job working for us at ESPN this is going to be Vincent Davis John and Jimmy and Dan Marino uh, I'm going to name drop here my neighbors down in Miami yeah you are Next. you are named they're name dropping. There's, there's my flex for the night Robert 610 to go you know you mentioned those Wake Forest fans that have, that have left the building and they were really looking forward to rolling the quad today, right? They do that after all right. the big wins. Right. It was something that we got to experience when they played against Florida State early in the year. But right now, 
looks like the Pitt Panthers are going to be the ones turning on the lights at the, the Cathedral of Learning, which they light up after their big wins. And in five minutes, I can only imagine how excited and happy they are going to be. They're the smallest Power 5 D1 football squad by enrollment in the country, accomplishing huge things Wake Forest did this year. That was Hammond on the run. Hey, I talked about the fact that uh, Steve Forbes has a great basketball team this year at Wake Forest, doing some big things off to a great start at 8 and 1. Talented assistant coach Brooks Savage on his staff as well. One of the young stars in the business on the sidelines. Third down and 12 coming up. You know, Chris Paul kind of. Kind of told you that Wake was a football. Yeah, school, yeah, he well, did. How, how's he going to say that when you got a Hall of Famer, Tim Duncan, right? <laughs> you got Muggsy Bowles coming out of there, and Chris Paul will be a Hall of Famer when right. it's all said and done. So, how can he think that Wake Forest is a football? Well, school? The, well he was wink, wink. But you know, you'll see Chris Paul on Christmas Day right here on ABC against the Golden State Warriors, part Who? of a great five-game lineup. Who's calling that game? On ABC. Yours truly. And Doris Burke on the call is Kenny Pickett will take a bow. Just feel that adoration and love wash over him. Listen to it. He said coming into the night that everything we want is right in front of us. Everything I need is within grasp. And what a game he had. And that was just a beautiful moment for Kenny Pickett. Yeah. Didn't have to come back, but he did. And the entire fan base here for the Pitt Panthers sounded like the Panther Pit from way back. <laughs> right. Where they're at. And Kenny Pickett, he punched his ticket to an ACC championship. And I bet you we're going to be seeing him in New York. You're going to be up there, right? I will be there. On the handoff. McPatty. Backup quarterback in. Clock running with about four and a half to go. It's such a good feeling when, when you come back to a school when you could have been a draft pick, could have went on to the NFL and lived out that dream, and he came back for exactly this moment 4,000 passing yards 40 touchdown passes only two other guys have ever done that yeah. in ACC history and it goes a little bit deeper than that on a personal level with he and his head coach Narduzzi he decided to come to Pitt Pickett did when the Panthers had no offensive coordinator no quarterback coach they trusted in Narduzzi and actually Narduzzi gave him a, a little bit of capital some equity in the decision as to who the offensive coordinator was going to be a little bit earlier, Robert shared a little bit of QB talk with Pickett on confidence and preparation. Uh, talk about your confidence and how you really instilled that confidence uh, in your whole team and gotten it back from you. Yeah, I mean, it's, you, you play the position, you know how it works. I'm, you're confident when you're prepared, and I try to be the most prepared guy in the building, whether that's physically, you know, mentally, you know, with the offense, with the defense, however I have to do it just to get guys motivated to go play. Um, you know, I'm willing to do it. Had a great time visiting with him on our call. Man, Kenny Pickett's just a guy that not only plays with confidence because he's talented right you saw his arm on display today he can zip it in there he can show the touch he can run you saw the the fake slide which maybe they should have stopped but they didn't right. so it was an incredible play incredible moment but he also prepares and when you hear him talk to his teammates in practice he's telling them where they need to be what they need to do how they can do this better they worked on the deep ball this offseason to give them a better chance to break open games like this one and it's paid dividends has it ever He's yeah. just, uh, he's living the dream right now. Especially with Addison on the other end of those. You know, Pat Narduzzi remembers 2018. He remembers the press conference after losing that game to the Clemson Tigers where they were dragged. They were disemboweled, taken apart. He remembers 
having to feel those questions after being obliterated by the Clemson Tigers, but he used that as motivation for this night to get back here. And they're able to now, within 240, of registering the school's first ever ACC championship. They won a couple in the Big East, but haven't done it yet in this conference. And Pat Narduzzi also talked about how this is, uh, it was time, right? Yeah. It was time for them to win one of these bad boys. Hey, after our game, head over to ACC Network because the Huddle Crew will have a complete breakdown with player and coach interviews, a comprehensive wrap-up, and a look ahead at what's next for the winning team. And you can always watch it on the ESPN app if you're out and about because nobody covers the ACC like they do. One app, one tap. And Pittsburgh about to tap the bottle and twist the cup. Hey, tap into it. You know they don't need an excuse to knock them back. <laughs> well, you got a guy named Servasier on your team. You're ready to go. Fourth and three. And a fair catch called at the 42-yard line. First and ten from there. Coming up live on ABC, the ACC Championship Postgame Award Ceremony. If you want to stick around and watch the Panthers be awarded the chip, the trophy, and everything that comes along in the ceremony. They've got the runway ready for the Gatorade shower for Coach Narduzzi. They do. Unsuspecting right now. <laughs> It's funny you said they got a guy named Servassier, right? Servassier right. Dennis. Just a beautiful, beautiful sounding name. Oh, yeah. But they also got a. They got coach. They got coach. Look at that. <laughs> when you least expect it, man. They also got a Habakkuk Baldonado, right? He's from Italy. Yeah. You know, I'm talking about a fine wine, right? Hey, hey. That sounds like a heavy wine right okay. there. I'll tell you what, nobody on that Pittsburgh side of the field is going to be drinking Thunderbird or Mad Dog tonight. It's going to be good stuff after this win. One minute to go. 45 to 21. Pittsburgh is going to have its first ever ACC championship. Pat Narduzzi said before the game right there mantra lock the gates because when the game starts it's too late. There is no way out. And they came here today did what they had to do we walk away victorious, 45-21. We put those Demon Deacons to sleep. Time winding down on Sam Hartman's regular season. There'll be a bowl game. And you know what? He's such a great kid. You hope that he can collect himself and regain whatever he may have lost and play well in his next one. It's it. Pitt has won the ACC championship. The Subway ACC championship belongs to Pittsburgh by virtue of their 45-21 victory. Let's take a look at tonight's fighting spirit moment brought to you by Modelo. And this game turned on a dime with these interceptions. We talked about it. The turnover margin for both of these teams has been great. They're in the top of their conference, top of all FBS. And Sam Hartman let one play, one bad play, turn into two and three and four. And Pitt just continued to pile on and break the game open. And because Pitt was able to come out here and exercise their demons, they walk away the ACC champions. Quinn is standing by with a special guest, Kenny Pickett. Kenny, congratulations. You take the field tonight. What was it like knowing that so much was at stake? Yeah, I mean, it's, at the end of the day, it was just another game. But, um, you know, it means the world to us to come out here and be the first team to win ACC champions um, at the University of Pittsburgh. So it's definitely special. Take me back to the first quarter, the touchdown run. What was that? <laughs> um, I don't know. I've been watching too much Mike Vick. But uh, I was planning on sliding. I saw him pull up. I just wanted to keep going. So it kind of worked out. You got banged up pretty good there. You went, you went down. You were in the, you were in the tent. What happened? Uh, I mean, just, just a little bruise. Had to get it figured out. But um, you know, I'm feeling a lot better now. 
You guys, you guys took a, a, a seven-point deficit and spun it into a, a, a blowout win. How'd you do that? I think just believing and trusting each other. We've been here before, been down before. Um, no one, no one better than I. Defense really stepped their game up. Um, second half, they were unbelievable. They were lights out. So a lot of, you know, a lot of credit goes to them. You think you got a shot to go to New York? I hope. We'll see. I mean, this this means the world to me. Whatever happens after this is just icing on the cake. Um, this was the goal from the start, and uh, you know, I couldn't be happier. How are you gonna enjoy this one? How? You guys already know how. Ah, come on. How are you gonna enjoy this one? <laughs> Couple <laughs> moments. <laughs> All right, Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he can hop a ride to New York with Robert, Quint. <laughs> he, can, he can knock back as many colds as he wants. Uh, Just make sure you get a designated driver, Kenny Pickett. 45-21 yeah. the final score. And some congratulatory moments on the field and in the stands for the Pittsburgh fans that made the trip. On the hill right now, they're making a little bit of noise. Up in Pittsburgh. Cardiac Hill. You know they climb it every game. No doubt. And what a game this was. When we look back, Robert, to the first quarter, that offensive explosion. Both teams just detonating offensively. And uh, we thought we were going to have a 70-point game here from each team. But, it, man, it turned quickly. And then the Pittsburgh turnovers really gave them the game. It was, and Coach Narduzzi talked about how he challenged his defense at the beginning of November to come out and play better, and we'll get back to that, but Kenny Pickett, it started with this play, just making the uncanny fake slide, slide to the end zone, letting everybody know that he can not only throw it, but he can run it, and then just getting the ball to his playmakers. They schemed up this Wake Forest defense extremely well. He threw the ball with precision. He threw the ball with power. He distributed it. He did what you're supposed to do as a quarterback. And boy, is Pitt lucky to have him. And now it's just a matter of which bowl game they're going to end up on. We'll find out on the college football playoff rankings show. And they'll be announcing the New Year's Six Bowls and the teams involved in those bowls tomorrow on ESPN. Let's go back downstairs to Quinn. Coach, congratulations. This is quite a moment for you. What, what, what were you dealing with when you took the field tonight? What kind of emotions? You, you had, a, you had a, a pretty stone face, but I know you were churning. You know what? Our kids didn't flinch all day long. You know, it was just great to come out of that locker in the beginning. We were here four years ago. We came here just, I think we're happy to be here. We came here to win the thing this year. Our kids were locked in. I've never seen them so locked in all week. Um, we had some illnesses in early in the week, and we had a bunch of guys out in practice. We didn't practice with all our guys, but our guys played a heck of a game. That was championship defense at the end there, that's for sure. You get the Gatorade. You, you get it dumped on you, Coach. <laughs> that, that's, that's a special night. It is special. I didn't know it was coming. You would think I would think about it, but we haven't had that for a while. But it was a, you know, it's a great moment for these kids, um, and uh, I couldn't be happier for them. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate Go it. accept your trophy. Let's go downstairs to Kelsey. Going to award the Panthers the Subway ACC Championship Trophy. They, they play for that shiny stuff. Pittsburgh fans, how we feeling? It is my privilege to be standing on this stage with ACC Commissioner Jim Phillips and tonight's winning team, the Pittsburgh Panthers. Commissioner, it is now time for you to present the ACC Football Championship Trophy to Pitt Head Coach Pat Narduzzi and your Pittsburgh Panthers.
Coach Narduzzi, I see you soaking in the moment and celebrating with your team. This is the first ever championship for Pitt. As you stand on the stage with this team, this players that have worked so hard, what does this moment mean to you? Hail to Pitt! This championship means everything. Means everything to the city of Pittsburgh. We, 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 we. It means everything. Our kids work their tails off. I got to first thank the Chancellor, Chancellor Gallagher, Heather, like our AD, these fabulous 120 players here tonight. Let's give those players a little bit. When we, when we arrived back in 2015, I, I took this job because I knew we could win a championship. Seven years later, we're here. Hey, old man. Just couldn't be proud of these guys. We're gonna bring this thing home to Pittsburgh and celebrate. Hail to Pitt. Coach Narduzzi's Panthers winning the final score 45-21 for Quint Kesnick, Robert Griffin, and our entire crew, I'm Mark Jones, so long from the Subway ACC Championship. Championship game based on his performance and the outs his outstanding performance rather in tonight's game. We talked a lot about defense, and this is a defensive player who certainly stepped up big and showed up big down the stretch. Give it up for Eric Hallett. Congratulations when you look out on this sea of blue and yellow and you stand on this stage bringing this first ever trophy home to Pitt. Tell me what this moment means to you. Uh, it means everything. These are the boys that I went to bat with. Uh, Spall, Fring, Summer. Uh, I just love them. It's an unbelievable feeling. An outstanding performance from you all over the place. And uh, can you take us through that pick six maybe? Um, it was a perfect call by our D coordinator, Randy Bates, so shout out to him. And uh, the blitz got there, and he, he was feeling hot, and he threw it hot, and I had to make a play. Eric, to be able to have this moment with the guys that you're surrounded by right now, what is it about this Pittsburgh team and this group of guys that's so special? We're gritty. We, we don't take no for an answer. And it's we, not me, always. Congratulations. Kenny, real quick before we go, I want to give you a chance. These fans have cheered you on time and time again. What would you like to say to this crowd? Just thank you to everybody that came out and supported. Pittsburgh is my second home. I love it so much. And uh, it's the city of champions, and we're bringing one home. So thank you. Congratulations. One more time for the Pitt Panthers. <laughs> All right, the Atlantic Coast Conference and the Charlotte Local Organizing Committee, thank you for attending tonight's game. Congratulations to the Pittsburgh Panthers, your 2021 Subway ACC football champs.
For the Panthers, they'll take that trophy back home to Pittsburgh. Mark Jones, Robert Griffin, the third. Robert, Kenny Pickett said coming into the game, everything that we need, everything that we want is right in front of us. And he came out in the first quarter in particular and set the tone for this team that really gave them a big-time chance. Pickett really did. He did it right away with the fake slide and slide to the end zone, a play that we will remember forever. But from that point on, he just continued to operate, execute the offense, get the ball to his playmakers in space, and allow them to do what they do best. Kenny Pickett is a bona fide Heisman candidate, should be in New York, and today he showed that just not turning the ball over is enough to win the ACC championship when you have the guys that he has around him. He passed for 253 yards, but the story of the game in the second half was the defense, which really was a catalyst in being able to take control for Pittsburgh. They had a couple of huge picks in the second half. They did, and you know, Coach Narduzzi said that he went off on his defense in the early November to let them know, do you want to win a championship? Because the offense will get you there, but the defense will win it for you. And they came up big with the four interceptions, giving their offense a short field. And that's how they were able to break out the game so much as you see Hallett right there with his second pick for a touchdown. They just came out here and told Wake Forest, those demons, Mm -mm -mm. They're not going to give us a problem tonight. Pittsburgh closes the game on a 31 to nothing run. That's a run run. And they're the ACC champions, 2021.